Well, just in case anyone needed a reminder, we are just over a week removed from South Carolina winning their third national championship. So just in case you all needed a reminder, let it let the record reflect that Don Staley and the South Carolina Gamecocks are the national champions of NCAA Women's Division I basketball. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very all, thank you very much. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started while everybody else is filtering in. Um, we're gonna, they're gonna tip in with their little church finger up. We thank y'all for tuning in today. We had an exciting, I think, well, obviously the ratings reflected two point something million views. Y'all analytics, you you got the numbers as always. What were the Do ratings? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, um, let's go with two point something something. It was like 2.2 2 million or something like that, but I saw it in like briefly looked at it but didn't really take it all in um, but it was over two million which is a drastic change from the past several years so what where we where we used to see what four hundred thousand six hundred thousand maybe tops out at seven hundred thousand for it to be two million definitely the south carolina effect um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's my story and i am sticking to it but we saw some amazing um we saw the fit we saw some questionable decisions by not a lot of teams just a few teams a few teams you know normally we we are left scratching our heads after a draft but i think a lot of the teams there were some clear cut people who made some really good decisions for their, not just their future, but also their now. So to come in and be really good complimentary pieces. But then you also saw some teams, you know, making or adding those pieces that could be like building blocks. So before we get into draft grades and everything like that, I just want to talk about the fits and all that good stuff. We're going to do our wind down where we really bring in the fits, but just right off the top, like who are some of your favorite moments from the draft? <clears throat> I did not like any of the outfits until Rakia <laughs> changed. Until Rakia changed to the second one, and I love that one. But I, everybody else, I no, no, didn't didn't like it. No, like, and I and I want to say this because I know how the girls get. It's not because I'm a hater. It's not because I'm broke. Yeah, I don't have it like they do. I know that. I'm I'm not the one on the internet saying that. That's not enough money, cause baby, I take seventy k for four months. I'm not one. I'm not that girl, but I didn't like any of the outfits until Rakia changed, and I like that. But before Rakia changed, she still wins because her face card is just unfuck. Like, I think I kept seeing pictures of Rakia and being like, this girl really just looks like this. Like, that's her face. Like, that's really her face. So, it was Rakia for me across the board, but I didn't like any of the outfits until she changed. <laughs> Um, I loved Rakia's. Um, yeah, I mean, what's not? I love the hair, everything about it. Just loved it. Um, I thought Cam's was cute because Cam was giving us some leg, and I love when the tall girls be giving leg and they're not afraid to like show that. Um, so Cam was Cam was cute. Um, I like the top half of Nika's, like y'all. I saw <laughs> Nika's fit. I saw the top half of Nika's fit, and then it was like a whole nother hour before I saw the full fit. And I wish I didn't see the bottom half. Like I really liked the top half, but then when I saw the skirt, I was like, "Uh, I want to go back to only seeing the top half." Um, I thought Camilla looked nice. She gave us a little power suit. I wanted a little bit more, but I also thought the power suit was cute. Um, who else? Yeah, those are all the ones I even remember right now off the top of my head. For me, I really enjoyed my top Five. Oh, and Camilla's sister. She was like top three. <laughs> <laughs> no. Camilla's sister ate down, so... For me, it was Cam, Rakia, Angel, Camilla, and Nika. Um, Cam really gave gave Hollywood something like I think I, I liked what everybody was giving. Um, there were some things I would have changed with some people. You know, maybe hair up, hair down, 
give a little give a little bob. You know, we love a good bob action and all that. Um, I maybe would have changed Camilla's shoes. Um, have the jacket uh, tailored in a little more, but I get it. You know, overall, everybody's faces look good. So I mean, yeah. nobody's nobody's face car was declining at all. So they all look good. Um, and for the most part, most people looked comfortable. You know, we see a lot mm-hmm. of times people be like pulling on things or whatever, and it's like they like they don't they, they look like they sit. don't even feel comfortable in their own fit. Yeah, right. Yeah, but Some of everybody them look sit. comfortable. Yeah, like some of them, they, like even when they they're sitting, they're still tugging and stuff. So everybody really looked comfortable. So I will say that. this too, I feel like Brink is kind of the same how I feel about Rakia. I didn't like her outfit. I didn't like that that fucking flower up at the top. Um, <laughs> and, and and I didn't. I don't know if I like like the wasn't it like black and white like the stripes were white mm-hmm. or whatever. I didn't mm-hmm. like that. But she just bad. So she looked great. Like I don't want to sit here and say like the girls looked great. I don't. I don't want to get, get confused. Like everybody looked good because they them girls. They got nice bodies. Their makeup was beat. Faces were beat, but. It just wouldn't wasn't wasn't my particular didn't like it. Okay. And Angel, I know I don't know like I said it's on playback. The hood, I don't just the hood on the whole time kind of threw me off. And I know it was on the bodyguard or Grace Jones, whatever, but that threw me off. And on top of having a hood, her hair really long, her long weave down too. I feel like if she could have pulled it up, put a little peekaboo little side bang out the side over the little eye or one eye. I feel like that would have been cute, but the long hair and the long veil. But and then she said that wasn't her original dress, so yeah. But she looked like she looked good. Mm-hmm. And, the and was good. For, the body was cute. for some of you all who were there um, later after this, we definitely want to hear like what was the experience because this was the first time um, in a while that fans were allowed to attend the draft and they sold tickets and everything like that. And so we would like to hear, you know. Exactly what was it like being able to go to the draft? Did y'all boo? I don't know. We didn't hear enough boos coming through the TV. And um, just so, you know, just raise your hands towards I, the end. I heard some encouraging cheers in the little videos that popped up. Like when Camilla was hugging the coaches, I heard some fans like chanting, you deserve it. And I was like, oh, y'all are so sweet. Because if I was there, I was booing um, Kathy every time she pulled up, bro. Every time. <laughs> Who else? Who else you was going to boo? <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. I probably would have been booing anytime Lobo looked like she was talking because I don't think I'd be sitting <laughs> near them. But anytime it looked like her mouth was moving, I just start booing. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. Oh, and Holly. Anytime Holly puts the mic up and gets ready to talk, I'm booing immediately. <laughs> Especially when she was like, when she was talking to Celeste and she was like, I hope this doesn't offend you. I would have been like, Boo! <laughs> get off the stage. <laughs> okay. And so, um, obviously, uh, as we mentioned at the top of the show, we saw that there were a lot of, for the most part, the draft, I don't think there were too many surprises. Most people, a lot of people got it right, at least for now, for what we think that they needed. And so, in no particular, well, yes, it, I lied. It is going to be in order, in alphabetical order. We're going to start and we're going to assess <laughs> the worst draft. <laughs> oh, not, wait. <laughs> wow, I guess, yeah, we are going to start kind of bad. So, in alphabetical order, we're going to um, start and we're going to go over the names of the draft picks and basically some of your notes in re- or some of your thoughts in regards to did they get it right? And each of you give them a grade. Like, give um, oh, let me let Shay up. Give them a grade, and that that grade can be a letter, it can be a phrase, it can be anything that comes to mind when you're assessing the players that these teams um that these teams selected. So first up, we got the Atlanta Dream. Their picks. <laughs> Good luck with the names. Okay, so I'm going to do I, Isabel Borlas, Matilde Vila, and Nayadu Pooch. 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 <laughs> so, yes, those three players, Pooch, Borlas, and Matilde Vila for the Atlanta Dream. 
what's the general consensus and how you all feel in regards to their draft selections? And did they address their needs? Um, no, they didn't. I crashed out last night. You said they crashed out? I crashed out because of it. I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like none of the needs were addressed. I, I needed a another big. I needed a backup point guard. I just, I don't know. And I, I watched some pressers, and they said they already feel like they have a really young team, so they didn't want to add any more youngins to the mix. And they feel like they got everything they needed through their trades. And I do think they picked up some good pieces, but I just, uh... yeah, I, I still think they need quality depth, though. Like I, even though they say that they have like a young team, their starters are pretty much vets right now. And I I would even consider Ryan a vet because she's like three years in and a great player. Um, So like with that starting line or the possible starting lineup of uh, Leash, Ryan, Jordan Canada, Cheyenne, and Tina, that's a lot of veteran leadership. And then you can add Nia Coffey into that as well. Um, Like those, that's like six vets on your team. So why not? continue to build for and the aerial future powers. and at an aerial powers like that's seven so like yes maybe grab a backup point guard that can start learning under jordan canada or a backup center that can learn under tina charles because who knows how long tina charles is going to be playing left like you literally could have just got younger pieces to learn under these great vets that you have and i like uh Nia do yeah, pooch. I like her. Um, but I don't know if it was the best pick for Atlanta because she reminds me of LA. And so it's kind of like you already got LA. I don't really see a need for her on your team specifically, but she's still a great player. Um, and then all the other players, they ain't even gonna be here this summer. So I I don't know. Atlanta confused me real bad. None it of the players coming. Yeah, none of them coming. Yeah, their their draft definitely gave like we don't want to even deal with <laughs> anybody new. So uh, let's just get people that ain't coming this year instead of actually getting quality pieces. So yeah. Okay, so a grade or phrase? How would you? Uh, oh, Shay. Oh, I don't got shit. I can't talk on nobody else shit. All I'm going to say is, <laughs> I don't know, that hashtag do it for the dream. And what the hell did the dream do exactly? <laughs> so if you had to if you had to issue a grade, what would that be? I just I just want I just want Ryan to be on a team that can compete and contend and do really well because she's a really good player and I feel like she deserves that and I just <sighs> I just don't know. I'm giving them an F because it sounds they like their reasoning behind it just sounds really lazy. Okay. I needed them to do better. Okay. So an F for the dream. Next up, we got Chicago Sky. Going into the draft, what were you, what were the needs that you thought that they needed to address? They just need a rebuild, in my opinion. Pieces that they can build around, pieces to kind of solidify their culture and what what they want to give. I think they just in the middle of the rebuild. So just to me, good solid pieces. I don't think they needed any point guards. They got a wing. Um, so yeah, I think just quote unquote culture pieces and people they can start to build around, in my opinion, or help build around. I agree. And so with that, the Chicago Sky selected Camila Cardoso, uh, Angel Reese, and Brina Maxwell. Um, what were your thoughts with the picks that the Sky made? I think they did good. Why is that? Yeah, I agree. I'll let go, logo first. I think um, Camila, I think she's played up these last couple of weeks. You really got to see what you could get. Um, I know, like, I've said in, in previous times, like, a 6'7 person who can run their ass off. You know what I mean? Like, that's just hard to pass up on. You can build around that. Who who messing with that? 
You know what I mean? An angel, whatever role. It, even if I know people like she need to develop, she need to develop what she does. But just having somebody on your team who was a dog like that in a snatcher rebound, and, and that's important to me, especially when you, like I said, we are building. You're trying to quote unquote rebuild, build a culture. I just think they're not that out of part. I think pe- they got pieces they can build on. They can, you know, grow with and good culture pieces. And I feel like they match the energy of the city and they match the energy of the girls, girlies they already got. Um, yeah, I, it took me, you know, I, I did some, uh, I had did some deep breathing and it, I went through some phases to get to acceptance for what it is. Um, and skill set wise, Angel and Camilla make sense. Um, I think that Chicago um, definitely could have used some more rebounding last year. Um, and I both both players are going to help with that tremendously. Um, I think that they have some great players that they're going to learn from as well. And to me, I felt like they probably needed more from the post uh, last year because I, I do think their guard play was pretty good. And even though I know Kaw's gone and Courtney Williams is gone, I do think they'll get a lot from Mabry, uh, Kennedy Carter, Dana. So I really do think they needed to, like, solidify kind of paint presence. Not the sometimes- size the eraser. That was purposeful, so yes. <laughs> um, but I do think that they need to, like, like, because sometimes Elizabeth Williams would kind of disappear, and she gives, like, to me right now, she gives more of a role player um, post-wise, and so I think, you know, you can start moving in the direction of these young players becoming your, like, center pieces for the future. Um, so I, I like the picks. I don't know why people gave them a C. Um, I don't know who they wanted them to go after. Like I know Rakia was pro- like was on the table and she could have been a great option too. But like Lo said, like it's hard to pass up on a six seven person that runs the floor well, finishes around the rim, rebounds well. Like it they don't grow on trees. Like they and really don't. for their teammates. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't like players of that size that like that runs like that. That don't that don't grow in trees. Like there's some six, seven players in the league that don't run like that. They six, seven big bodies. They banging, but they don't run the floor the way Camilla does. The sky are going to be the most fun team this summer. I get them an A. They got the city excited. They got two good pieces. They gonna be fun as hell. And they got spoon some shit to work with. Yep. I agree. <clears throat> so yeah. Um so overall you all you all think, you know, an, an A for the sky. I like it. Okay. All right, so next we're going to... I want to know where the hell they got C from. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, it, it just it just never... Never mind. Go ahead, B. Two black players, black coach. Um, I know. did get a little shooter, a little white shooter. Oh, yes, yes. You're right, you're right, you're right. My bad. And she be shooting oh, that okay. <laughs> Someone in the comments, because I didn't read the article, I'm not even going to lie. Someone said that the grade wasn't related to the who, it was related to believing they gave up too much in the trade. Made and I disagree with that, day. too. I disagree. Because it's, up- it's a 2026 pick. So, I mean, they got this year and next year. And that, and it's like, to me, in this draft, you hit the jack. To me, you trade up and you gave it away because you got another first rounder. You got both. You got an Angel and a Camilla. And when you're trying to rebuild, that's what you need. So if I done, if I didn't picked up two solid bigs and I still got Dana and I got some guards to work with, that's in 2026. At that point, I could trade around and get what I need in uh, in in other areas. I done got two solidified pieces that I can really build on. That's why I, even that is bullshit to me. I think they reach it. Like to me, they didn't give it. They didn't give. I, I think they fine. I don't think that's a big of a deal. I really don't. Yeah. Who's twenty six? Who's that class? It don't matter. You got Angel and Camilla. Hell, mm-hmm. whoever's sophomores right now, right? Seniors will up. Yeah, juniors would be yeah, next so year. So sophomore class. So Ashley Watkins and them. Um, yeah. 
it is not like trades, like possible trades won't happen again. Right. Like look at where Chicago was before right. the draft and they ended up with two picks in the exactly. top half. So if you're thinking about building now and possibly, you know, like it it really doesn't hurt. So exactly. with the addition of these picks, and we know anything could happen um in regards to, you know, the trades um, being made, whatever. Do do they move the needle to get them towards the lower half of the playoff race, or they're still not a playoff team? Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. Not even eight. You know, not even eight. I mean, I don't know. I I don't want to put. I'm not. I'm not trying to put any really thing on anything on them. Like I said, I feel like they're in a rebuild and they're getting together, getting it together. And they're building some foundation. So I'm not going to put too much on them. I'm just going to let them do their thing and let them build. They're going to be fun and they're going to sell some tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. They're going to yeah. be... They're going to they gonna bring them out. Strap. They're going to bring gonna, them out. Yeah, they're going to fight, them. you know, not like physically, but they, they're they going to put up a fight they, in every game. They might. <laughs> I don't I don't know. <laughs> but, um, like, their team, I, it's, it's a big question mark because a lot of the players are like coming, trying to fight their way back into the league, uh-huh. like Kenny Carter. So you don't know what you're going to get from her. Kaiser. Um, Michaela, Kaiser, Michaela played well with Phoenix, but she's still trying to find her role and where she belongs in the W. Um, same as Diamond coming off of an injury. I feel like we haven't seen Diamond play in years. So it's, it's going to be, I'm going to give them time before I just throw them into being up there with right. uh, the bottom half of the league. I'm going to give them time. Okay. Okay. All right. So, shout out to you all there um, in, in good old Chi-Town. Sorry, I saw a tweet today that <laughs> say that Chi-Town is not a thing. Stop saying that. So, I don't know what we're supposed to say. The Windy City. Wait, they don't say that, Chi-Town? That's what Kanye West said. See, I, from that tweet, I, I, um, I think uh, it was Shakia who posted it, or maybe Greg or someone. They're like, chi is not really a thing, so I ain't going to say it. I, I don't care. I'm going to say what I want to say. <laughs> Shout out to the city of Garrett's popcorn. Um, going on to the, what's, what's this phrase that this team always like, disrespect or something? They've been disrespected for like 18 years now or something. <laughs> um, Connecticut Sun. So going into the draft, what did you think um, were the the I don't want to say holes, but the 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 needs that they needed to address? Um, I just think they needed a big guard, maybe yeah. a backup, like another big. Um, they but, be good. But then I don't even think they needed another big because Ono's been coming along so well. It so will. I just think like maybe a big guard, at least going for them. I just thought a big guard would be nice. Okay. So what they took in the draft, they took Layla Lacan from France, France, uh, Tayana Jackson, Helena Pueyo, and Abby Shu. So overall, um, what do you think about their selections? I wanted Jackson in Atlanta. Huh. But, <laughs> um, I, I, I'm mad all over again. Skip me. <laughs> Um, I, I, Connecticut was like interesting because I felt like what they needed, they weren't going to really get in this draft unless they like went after a Marquisha Davis or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, cause she was kind of really the only like big guard, like athletic guard that I thought could be ready to go. Um, so, I mean, they got pieces. I'm not really super convinced that the pieces they got are going to make the roster, unfortunately, but yeah. uh, I don't really know how to grade them because I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to give them an NA. They, um, my, I struggle with Connecticut in theory. Cause like, I feel like this group has reached a ceiling. Mm. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I just think that they're going to have to get a real different piece in order to get to where they're trying to go. Mm, okay. But now, what would that different piece look like? This, uh, I don't dynamic think it's going to be in the draft either. It's not, like Yana's saying, it's not in the draft for them. Like, it's just not, like, it might be free agency for them. But I just don't think this core is going where they want it to go. It's always third and second best for them. And does anyone voluntarily ever really go to Connecticut? I mean... Uh, count it twice, did. 
Dewana had twins. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so you, Yana, you gave them an NA. Uh, Shay, Low, what, what's y'all? What, what's grade y'all issuing them? Um, I don't think they did bad. Uh, I go B. Yeah, I go B. I don't think they did bad. I think they did really good in the um. Um, free agency and stuff too. I don't. I don't think they did bad. I think they're solid because, like, I think Shay said, one of their issues is not. It's just kind of like, what this group is it? Is it done? Like, have they reached a peak? Like, they've been second place for years, third, whatever. So, but I think they did decent. I think they did fine. Okay. Moving on to the Greg bids and the fighting back the blues. Um, we got the Dallas Wings headed into the draft. What were some changes that you all thought that they need to make? I don't know. I don't pay attention to Dallas. Sorry. <laughs> um, for me, I thought that they could get a guard, um, another score on the perimeter. Uh, I honestly, my issue with Dallas is that they got too many damn bigs, to be honest, but that's not something <laughs> that I just think they need to trade one or two away because they just got so damn many. But, um, I, I think as long as they got a guard in this draft, they'd be set. And I like the guard that they got. I think JC Sheldon's a great guard. Um, I like ah, the pick. Let me announce the people who they got for Oh, me. sorry. Go ahead. Greg Bibb got a tight. Y'all remember Enrique Post last season? Yeah, he, he does. He does. <laughs> Um, so the, the, the wings selected JC Sheldon, Carla Lady, and Tasha Cobbs, also known as Ashley Awusu. So how do you think those players fit in to that roster? They need a they need a point guard. Uh shoot. You tripping. Ashley Awusu get in there and who takes him out of your Yeah. yeah but, and I yeah. mean when you think about last year's roster. Diamond isn't coming back. Um, obviously, they haven't re-signed Odyssey for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. I don't know if they're trying to do like they did last year um, and sign her like late or something, so like cost less. But they didn't really re-sign her. Um, so there's room. Uh, I do think Burton could be better sometimes offensively. So if Awusu does come in and she can control the team and knock down. Those open shots, it could get interesting. Um, but I think J.C. Sheldon was, like, a perfect fit. I think she's a perfect fit for the perimeter. Um, like, can play the minutes that Arike's on the bench, maybe, you know, uh, give Arike a breather every once in a while and stuff like that and be that, like, knockdown shooter they need. I like I like her. So and she plays defense. Roster, with the roster that they have, who's – who who – I don't know. Maybe shouldn't ask. No, ask. Who fighting for a spot? Um, I. I mean, we are. They all are. Everybody fighting for a goddamn spot. Dallas' problem is they are hoarders. They just got people on a roster. So everybody need to play for their damn spot, other than um Arika. And, because, and I think you know, and I think that um. Obviously, there there potentially be some hard. There could be some hardships. Uh, I'm not sure what the timetable is now with Satu and her return. Um, there, you know, also there are some some players who could be out for Olympic commitment. Um, and so, you know, their bigs, like you said, they do have a plethora of bigs. They have Kalani, Tierra, Natasha. They, it, I guess, you can Suarez too. They got oh. Suarez too. Oh, and Suarez. So mm-hmm. they have a lot of bigs. So, you know, I don't know, maybe they're hoarding some of these players and just trying to keep them at bay for the expansion draft or something, but they, they do have a lot of people. So I think the big spots will probably be more of a competition uh, when it comes to training camp than guards, right? Because, I mean, Ariki ain't going nowhere. Who are their other guards? Um, I mean, Satu's pretty much a three for them. Um, Crystal, Dangerfield, Burton. Um, uh, what you call it playing right now? Uh, Lopez? Lou? Yeah, Lou. And um, I forgot, but they also got Maddie. And Maddie is like a four, too. So, like, they, they just got a lot of fucking forwards and centers. Like, it's a lot of them. Damn, Emma Cannon on this team, too. Shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> that fact. We need a camera set up there. So if you all had to grade them, um, what were what, what you were you giving um, the wings? I give them a, a A minus because I like the J C Sheldon pick, and I think a Wusu could be a steal. Okay, okay. A minus, low Shay. What y'all think? Can you hear me? I'll agree. I I could go with that. I I think they looked at their leads and went on what they needed. So that's that's good. Yeah, uh-huh. they didn't piss me off this draft. So. Yeah, they did what they needed to do. You'll be pissed off a little later. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> see see how <laughs> you ain't have to fucking do that. <laughs> so next we're gonna go over to the story of the night, the Indiana Fever. Um, what oof, we know that there were some obvious needs that the fever needed to address, um, based off of looking at their roster or their performance last year, especially when in quite a handful or two handfuls of their games by single digits. So outside of passing, what else did you all think that the fever needed to address, um, going into the draft? I mean, the, sh- cur- the current people on the roster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like they did I mean, the draft, but they still got a very they got four hundred guards over there that want to take four hundred shots. Sweet. Like I mean, I don't hate Indiana's roster. I honestly didn't hate it last year, to be honest. I just think they had a hard time playing team ball, um, and some of that reason is still on the roster. Uh, so. Like, I can just, I literally can see it now. Christy Sides is going to call for a pick and roll with Aaliyah and Caitlin, and Wheeler is going to pop in and steal the ball and shoot it. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, somebody's going to do 50 11 moves before they even attempt to shoot. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Cone Drill. But I, I mean, I like the picks. I like, you haven't announced them yet, so I'll let you announce them. So, with that, <laughs> The picks are Caitlin Clark, Celeste Taylor, and Leilani Correa. Mm, I did that. Oh, let me say it again. <clears throat> Correa. Oh, brother. <laughs> Correa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what do y'all think about the picks? Do we think that obviously we know Caitlin is there, is is going to be on this roster? Do we think that um, Correa and Celeste will go in and challenge some of those other players? A la maybe Christy Wallace, Maya Caldwell, Erica Wheeler. I positions. What do we think, think? I think Celeste, if her defense is defensive, possibly, because I feel like sometimes last year that's kind of what they tried to use Victoria Vivians for. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that she's gone, I can see her possibly sliding into that. But at the same time, you have a Lexi Hall there, so you don't need a. It's not a huge need, but if she defends her ass off, that's 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 something that you just it's hard to say no to. So maybe her. Um, who is the other one? Christy Wallace. Oh, Leilani. Oh Korea. no, no, Layla, man, Layla, like, she a bucket, but yeah. her energy, her energy is not always there for me. So I will even have to see how she look in the training camp. Um. Yeah, I think. Celeste has a really good chance of making this roster. Um, she's going to have to knock down some shots, though. And like Lo said, if you kind of already have a Lexi Hole there, whose kind of main focus is defense, um, because unfortunately, Hole's shot has not yet transitioned to the W. So uh, I, I think Celeste can. I wouldn't be shocked if Celeste is on this roster um, at all. And obviously, Caitlin will be on it, too. But I wouldn't be shocked if Celeste is on it. Uh, Leilani, I'm a little concerned about. I, I'm I don't not 100 percent sure about her, but I think Celeste has a place on this roster. Shay, oh, I don't got. I just want to see the tape when we get to training camp and the guards is out there fighting for their life because this shit. At go, is Grace, Maya, Caitlin, Leilani. Oh God, I forgot Grace. Still, Lexi, Kelsey. Celeste, Christy, and Erica. Like, who? It's somebody, a lot of them. A, a bit, like, somebody going to have to gonna get their feelings hurt. Hell, it sounds like they might be better. And, and what, they only got, what, four post players? Nalissa, Aaliyah, uh, Duntis, and Saxon? Uh, 
Timmy Fat Binglay is back. Okay. Uh, Katie Lou. Oh, dang. And Sex. <sighs> it's going to be, I mean, they got pieces. They just got to put the right pieces together and get them to work together. But Indiana got pieces. Mm. Well, um, so what do we get? Are we giving Indiana an A? I'll give yes. them a. Uh, I'll give them an A. Okay. All right. So now we're moving on to the defending back-to-back champions, the Las Vegas Aces, and. They had no first round pick, so I'm going into the draft. What were the areas of opportunity um, for the Aces? Quality guard. depth. Yep, little point guard back up. Okay. I just don't know how how everybody let Vegas eat their ass up in this draft. They should be embarrassed. They really they did. Were, I didn't like. I wasn't expecting. Me them to do this well in the draft because of how far down they were. I definitely wasn't expecting them to do this well. But then they... Becky gonna say, we ain't think you'd be available. <laughs> she sat there and waited for fair. That's exactly who she wanted. Y'all let her get... I just like, how y'all letting this lady run the table on y'all like this? Like, are y'all not embarrassed? Every I'm year. Embarrassed. Well, like she's running the table to announce then, the players. You know, hold on, hold on right quick. Hold on. To oh, announce man. the players, Sorry. we got Miss Fair, the third all-time leading scorer in NCAA women's history. Uh, from Syracuse, we got Kate Martin, who just pulled up in her in her Jays. I'm sitting here. I'm just trying to cheer on Caitlin. Oh snap! They calling me. Um, Elizabeth Kitley, who we know won't be an impact this year because she will be rehabbing. And Angel Jackson. Shout out to the HBCUs from Jackson State. So with those players, they have some really, really good pieces. They got size. They got pieces that they can stash in the future. They got people who can come in and contribute possibly right away. That's going to be an interesting camp. I don't think I see nobody coming and contributing right away. But Really? Even if a little, a little spell, get a couple buckets here and there? Okay, not like no. six woman of the year type contribution, but could be a solid like maybe eight to ten minutes. No. Hmm. Okay. Then it not not on that team. Okay. Okay. Um. But yeah, and then you you let her get fair. You let her get Kitley to have and sit and and, and rehab and and get in. It. Now you know Kitley not my favorite because she's soft to me. But in that system, how they play, it could work perfect. Like I just, how did they let these? How did they let Ace the Aces keep getting away with this? <laughs> How did they let them keep getting away with this? I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. So overall, what are we giving the aces? I'm giving them the A. Because, like, they got everything that they needed um, and more, to be honest. Because I don't think anyone thought Kitley would drop that far. Like, I know she was injured and, like, but I think her being able, like, her injury also makes it an A because, like, now you can stash her and you can rehab her in your amazing-ass facility. And then you have her learning from Candace Parker, Asia Wilson, and you're preparing her for next year. Like, and, like, I, yeah, that was just, yeah, Especially I don't know. because they're going to have to make some players available in the expansion draft. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give them an A. I like the draft. Um, I'm happy that, you know, there's options in the, at their training camp for a backup point guard for Chelsea Gray with uh, Bria Hartley and now Fair. Um, I like that there's like, you know, they brought in Megan Gustafin, which is huge. Um, and honestly feels Don't like a steal pancake. in off season. Yeah, can't forget Pancake. Um. Yeah, they get an A for me. A plus plus because they took fair. Because I hate how y'all be playing with tiny guards, bitch. <laughs> Her shoes is bigger than she was. Not too much on the pro. Not too much on the products with the bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Okay. So shout out to the once again defending 
back-to-back champions, the Las Vegas Aces. Well done, Becky and Co. Um, shout out to Natalie Williams. Um, they were in their Duffy. They did they, that. They, they were. They were in Who their war room warring. And Mark said, never mind, I'm not going to do that because we don't want to be investigated. Um, now, going on over to the city of, is it lights? City Angel? of Angels, Los Angeles Sparks. The city of lights, B. About to be the baddest team in the league, child. They, I don't know how many games they're going to win, but they're going to look good doing it. Walking through the door. <laughs> The Los Angeles Sparks um, definitely were one of the more fashionable teams. I mean, their duo, I'm going to just go ahead and announce who they drafted. Cameron Brink with Kia Jackson and uh, Fight On McKenzie. Forbes. Forbes. Huh? Forbes, yeah, Forbes. Yeah, Forbes. Fight On Miss McKenzie Forbes. So getting a chance to keep her local. Um, what did we think about the Sparks? What they did? What they needed? Did they address those needs? And just overall, what are we expecting from them on court this season? I can I think honestly, they did a good job. I think I like their draft, but I can't tell you what their needs were because I still think that roster is a clusterfuck. I have no yeah. idea what the goal is. Well, that roster. Donna, they didn't need no more tiny little guards, so they didn't do that, which is good. True. That's a plus. They got a big guard. Great. Uh, Azure's out. Neck is out, so they got it big. That's good. Uh, Forbes, I that's another big. What 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 is she? I feel like I just seen her do a lot of everything. She she could play the she would play the three. Okay, so big guard. So, yeah, we ain't getting no more tiny little tiny mic guards, which is which is good. And she shoots it pretty well guard. too. And now, in the I'm, case of Rakia Jackson, do we think that in this draft, Rakia is the one that was probably the most pro ready? Yes, yes I do think so. Yes. Okay. Sparks gonna be. They gonna be. That's a good team, and I think Forbes got a a chance. Uh, not a good team. I lied. I'm so sorry. I said the wrong words. That's gonna be a fun team to watch. <laughs> Um and Forbes got a chance, a real chance to make that roster. So I'm happy she got drafted there. But shit. Brink Brickia and Brink Brickia. I'm gonna have to work on that. That shit sound like a virus. No, that's good, Brickia. Brickia, that shit, man. They gonna it's gonna be <laughs> yeah. the hole's gonna be out in LA. Yeah, buddy, that's gonna be fun. LA and Chicago gonna bring the whole yeah. I bet you yeah. I bet you the people will know how to get those little sideline tickets now. <laughs> <laughs> so what you said? They ain't gonna bring them out. No more. <laughs> but that's gonna be a little different. Indy gonna bring them out, but that's gonna be a little different. Yes, exactly. Indy's audience and it will not compare to that in terms of culturally with LA and Chicago. I really think she, uh, Camilla and 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 it's interesting because I know a lot of people think it would thought it would just be Angel, but Camilla gonna bring her ass out. To, Chicago gonna be a movie. Yeah, have you seen the videos of them hopping in the DMs? People have been recording, saying, let's say... Um, oh, yeah, I saw that. I want to climb this Brazilian tree, or <laughs> I'm trying to be earned, So they probably earned, blocked. Earned you, huh? Then they blocked me, because Camilla already told y'all she don't like them lines, so they blocked. <laughs> like, the videos have been going up. In Chicago. I'm excited to see what Chicago does, especially on the spoon. Um, we want to make sure that we say spoon and not spend cash. Um <clears throat> So, <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I had to. Um, so yeah, shout out to the Spark. So, our, um, it sounds like general consensus in a yeah, I like the picks, I think they got the best players available. And when you're built, when you're rebuilding, that's what you want to do. When they got do the we best think that there available. was a gamble? On the if they were, you know, because a lot of people say mm, you got to take Rakia because she might not be available at four. Do we think that that they they kind of no, have? The, I don't think that was a gamble. Okay. Well, congratulations, Sparks. We're not sure where you're gonna be next year, but y'all gonna look good doing it. So you're gonna have fun. Yes, yes, you will. Going on over to the Midwest with uh, Cheryl Reeves. Wait, hold on, B. Can I say something okay, else about the Sparks? 
I, mm-hmm. Magic Johnson, you are a revered figure in sports. I don't want to see no goddamn more videos of you talking about I'm so happy about my sparks until you put your money where your mouth is and get them girls a real goddamn facility. I'm tired of every time they go somewhere else, they looking around like Make-A-Wish kids because they finally got a goddamn locker. <laughs> <laughs> Stay your ass at home and go and build them what they deserve. Go ahead, B. You say Dwayne Way, you too. Yes, him too. Y'all got the money. Go in there and do what y'all are supposed to do. All of these prayers, just open your purse. Okay. Russell. Um so... <laughs> he really sent some prayers and wish <laughs> send prayers up to the mm. <laughs> can't relate. <laughs> Take it from Sierra's music budget and give us a, a play. Okay, so Minnesota Lynx, um, they got Elisa Peely and Kiki Jefferson. What do we think? Um, you know, Cheryl always has a tendency of not necessarily going with who you expect her to get, but um, finding you know players. I won't say diamonds in the rough, but she always does like the more uh, a non traditional type of a draft. So, do we think that this fit into what she? how she normally drafts, and how do we see these players fitting into the Lynx system? Yeah, I think Peely would be fine. Um, but I just want to know how did they get an A when 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 the, when Chicago got a C? Maybe the trade, I guess. I don't know. They did get like... It's in two years? Yeah. I guess like the right now player with Sika. Is Sika even playing this year? I don't know. But she's like, Sika has a really good upside um, but that's the only thing I can think of is the trade. But even then, I don't, no, yeah, I don't think that gives them an A in Chicago a C. C, yeah, the dis- it's a discrepancy. Like that don't make sense to me. But, yeah. I, I think, mean, I think. I, go ahead, Yana. They still need a big. I don't know who's gonna be, but they need a center real bad, like a to real center. Who? Uh, uh, Fee. Like Fee is really good. But Phoebe down there banging with six five, see that's not, and she can, she's great, right? But let that baby get a break. Yeah, let her be a four. Let her let her shoot. Let her do that. Like Phoebe has a lot of finesse to her game that I think we miss a little sometimes because she's always down there trying to bang, and and she don't. I just feel like get her some help. So she if if Phoebe was with a real center, Phoebe Phoebe be MVP. She mm-hmm. had a really, really great year when Sill was down here. Yeah, be a bit MVP. Mm, okay. That's why I'm like, I don't know how you get him an A. Yeah, I, I yeah, I just really wanted them to get a big. I don't know which big they could have gotten. Maybe a Tyana Jackson. Um, but I just wanted them to get a big body. Well, we're going. To, so it sounds like you all are definitely not on the A train. So what are we looking at? C plus, B minus. I'll give yeah, him a B plus. I give him a B minus. I am interested to see what Cheryl does with Peely. Peely was is like one of the more interesting prospects because she can hoop, like she can go. Let's go. But I just don't know where she fits in the W. Like I don't know where she like what's her lane. Um, so I'm excited to see what it is, like, because if anybody's going to craft a lane that ain't there, it's Cheryl. Cheryl will figure it out. Okay. So going on over to the runners-up, the bridesmaids. Never the losers. The bride. huh? The losers. <laughs> the New York Liberty. They selected Marquisha Davis. Esmeri Martinez, Jessica Carter, Caitlin Davis, and Jalen Sherrod. She wasn't drafted, but she was immediately signed to a training camp contract. So overall, I know we talked about defense. We talked about, you know, possibly some size, um, some dogs for their team uh, to help out, you know, Benaja on the defensive end. Um, and, um, what's her? She's going hyphenated now. Laney, what's her name? Laney Jordan? Anyways, <laughs> next, Lady anyways, Hamilton, but no. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> but what do we? How do we think that they did for uh, the Liberty? I think I think them picking up Marquisha was really good. I think people are sleeping on her because they don't watch enough, mm-hmm. or they don't mess with Yo or whatever. But that girl could really hoop, 
And I think it's very disingenuous how y'all how they pushing Nika. Should have been Nika. Should have been Nika when they've been talking about Nika all year. Nika can't pass. Make Paige point guard. She turned over the ball too much. Nika can't shoot. Put Nika on the bench. And now we upset that she didn't get drafted high to the Liberty. So wait, we're like, Uchi Wally on one mic. They picked Markeisha Davis, and it was a good pick. Just say you don't watch. Go watch some highlights. Now, will the girl have a learning curve? Sure, but Markeisha Davis was a, was, a, was a great pick for them, I feel like. Defensively, two-way player, she can score the ball if you need her to, but you probably don't need her to. But you do need her to be long and active on defense. She could do that. She's coming from a program that does defense. Like, it's a really good pick. Like, please. Please. And like outside of sometimes looking like Ka on the court physically, she actually plays like Ka. Like she literally is she's a slasher. She's super quick, strides like she can get out and she can go in the fast break. She has a really nice mid range, like and she defends. She's long. Like I don't even know why you wouldn't want her. Um and I don't like I Nika, Marquisha, I, I don't know. That's, I guess, honestly, yeah, that's weird. But um, I thought she was a great pick. Great, great pick for them. Do we like Jalen as a backup point guard for what they um chose? Yeah. They, they need one, right? Because uh, Marine's not coming back, I don't think. They need one anyway because somebody got to play defense at that position. Yes. Jessica Carter for some size. Esmeralda Martinez. Caitlin Davis. Yeah, that's cute. Katie. I see it while I get through. That's 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 dope. So do we see outside of Marquisha, um, who definitely fits a lot of their needs, uh, or um, do we see any of the other players really making it a competitive training camp? I think mm. Jessica Carter can. I'm trying to think. Let me see. Because really they just have John Quell. Like John Quell is And they got baby Sobley and um yeah, they got baby Sobley. But I think Jessica Carter could bang with her a little bit, make it interesting. I know they like baby Sobley though, so she'll probably stick, but I think Jessica Carter could make it interesting. Mm-hmm. Cause remember there's no Han and then there's no Steph Dolson. Mm-hmm. Steph Dolson is now in Washington. <laughs> So what are we giving them as a go? I saw you come off mute, Shane. What you about to say? No, nope, not saying nothing. <laughs> but what are we giving the Liberty as a grade? I think I give them a, uh, I give, I give them an A. Me plus A. I'm yeah. going to give them an A because they were listening to us on Twitter. We told them, you need DEIs. And what did they do? <laughs> <laughs> they went and tried. They got them. They sure did. <laughs> They went and said, we going to do what we got to do. <laughs> okay. That locker room is going to be very interesting. Um, So, yes. So, moving on to the desert, we got the Phoenix Mercury, Charisma Osborne, and Jazz Shelley. Um, overall thoughts. We know that this could be the, 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 the final year of DT. We know that they're um they they've invited or they brought in a plethora of players. There's some interesting personalities to go along with each other. There's Cobb, there's Cloud, there's um I think they also have Rebecca Allen, um Sophie's still there. So you know they have a point guard in Charisma Osborne, and then they added another guard in Jazz Shelley. Do we think that those two? Um, make it competitive at least. Um, you know, they also have Shug Sutton, who was more than likely going to be the backup point guard. Uh, I don't know. I think it could be interesting because they do need, um, like, more guard play, I guess. Um, like, out, outside of, like, the bigger names that are probably going to play, they do need some depth. I know they have uh, Amy Atwell, and she can shoot the lights out. Um, but... Like the pl- the other guards that they have currently on the roster for training camp are players that haven't played in a little bit, like Kristen Williams. Um, so it like maybe one or two guard spots is kind of open on the bench, but they got to figure out what they're gonna do with the four position. I I mean they could play four guards, one post, which is what it seems like it's gonna be with uh BG, but 
defensive wise, I'm concerned about them because the best position in the league to me is the four spot. And they don't have nobody on that team that can guard the fours in this league. Right. They're they're fours that they have right now, what, Rebecca and Kiki and uh Natasha yeah. Mack. Oh yeah, Natasha. What team is Brianna Turner on? Chicago. Chicago. Oh. Intriguing. Okay. <laughs> So Natasha Mack, Rebecca Allen, and and Kiki are, I guess, their fours. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, those those players um, are gonna get cooked by some of the the great fours in the league. Real mm-hmm. bad. Okay. And I can't wait. Put that shit on TV. <laughs> so um sounding like Phoenix, it's not a B, it's not an A. Maybe a mid B. Uh, I'll give them like a B minus C ish range. Cause I don't really think they did anything. Like they kind of was just like, oh, because they didn't pick till like towards the end. So it was yeah. kind of just like a their first pick was like third round, so it really just gave, ah, let's just grab whoever's available and go on home. Okay. Man, I wish Charisma would have came out last year. I don't like her game. I think she would have gone higher if she would have just, yeah, so we, I don't we know. Think that that's an example of um, people not really understanding the climate of the W and or it was it was an unnecessary gamble. Um you know we've seen we've seen a few players who probably kind of, like Ashley Jones um decided to come back to the fifth year when she probably was a top five pick um her original year. She came back, didn't really do anything spectacular to increase her stock. Um kind of the same for Charisma Osborne and some others. So like you said, do you feel like where where do you think that she would have gone last year? Or Who was in last year's class? Hold on, I don't even remember. remember who was in last year's class outside of Aaliyah and my game talks. But um I just think it's one of those like if you're gonna go if you're gonna stay an extra year, you gotta still elevate your game, right? <laughs> Because the players behind them are elevating their game and they're getting better. So you can't come back and still be doing the same thing you were doing the year before because that's not going to be good enough. Like, it really feels like with every class, the players are just getting better and better. The drafts are getting deeper and deeper. So you got to elevate. If you're going to stay an extra year, you got to elevate. Okay. Well, the COVID. This is the last of the COVID year, so everybody that comes out now um, will be four-year players, or granted, unless there is an injury. So, um, going to the Seattle Storm, this was, I think, one of my favorite picks because they really addressed a need. Um, they they got a backup point guard in Nika Mule, and you know she gets a chance to play under Skyler and Jewel, and they also picked Mackenzie Holmes. So what do you think about those two picks and, you know, uh, going forward with the Storm? I think it was perfect. We know D- we know Nika. Um, a lot of people felt like she would have been a first-round pick because of her defensive performance during the Final Four against Caitlin. Um, but I feel like – and we've always heard it. Sometimes it's not about where you go. It's, it's, it's about the fit. And so, oh, excuse me, it's not about the number in which you go. It's about the, the, the fit and where you land. And I do think that Seattle is a really good spot for her. Um, we know that Skylar has got, gone on record and like, look, she want to play with dogs. If, you, if you're not out there defending like her, like, you got to go. And so someone to have that same type of tenacity on the defensive end, we know Skylar can score. The offense will come, in the words of Holly, the offense will come, Nika. Um, so... Like, what else does the Storm need, do you all think, to really be competitive? They kind of have all of their positions. They have their threes. They have their fours. And, you know, obviously they have their their first two guards. So is there anything else that's standing out when it comes to the makeup of the Storm roster for y'all? 
probably just depth, but I think they're pretty solid at like their first first group, which is depth, which is always necessary. Or unless you the aces and super women, but yeah, depth. No, I think that's a potential. That's probably a finals roster on paper, assuming everybody is healthy. Mm-hmm. I do think I forgot Kiana was on that on that roster. So Kiana and Nika gonna have to duke it out. Mm-hmm. Not a trailer. Williams. Nah, uh, Williams from Stanford. Oh. Yeah. I like I like the roster Seattle's put together so far. They got the versatile. They got Jordan Holmes. They got. I love her. Yeah. Oh, I love her. They got Jordan Holmes. They got Jordy. Um, there's Mercedes Russell still there. Eddie. like that is really a good roster there. That's a playoff team. That's a top three team. And can I just say, this has nothing to do with Seattle, but it's like adjacent to Nika. Um, I see the media people, and I see the way y'all have addressed Nika and how her superpower is defense versus how you addressed another player's superpower being defense last year. Um, It just seems like everyone was okay with the fact that offense can come in time but if you step into the league and you can defend then there's a place for you in the league because last year it didn't feel like that it felt like if you can't score there's no place for you in the league because defense didn't matter and so i just i see it i peeped it and we know why it was different and i need y'all to do some soul searching and look in the mirror and figure out why Y'all have certain views for certain players of a certain hue versus different views from from certain certain programs of a different hue. I see it. I peep it. I just wanted to point that out. So overall, an A for for um for the storm. Yes. Yes. All right, and last but not least, most people, most people did pretty good. Yeah, most so. people. <laughs> it, 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 interesting that you say that because last but not least, going to the fighting mumbo sauces, we got the Washington Mystics, where they took Aaliyah Edwards, Kaylin Trung, and Nastia Classens. So, Shay, take us away. Uh, cover your years. Ha! That's all I have to add. Like, and that's no, because Aaliyah Edwards is good. I think she's going to be a good pro. Like, she's going to be fine. I just don't. Angel is right fucking there. You, the goddamn owner been swinging his dick. I'm so sorry, y'all, but he been swinging his dick around about, I'm going to move the team to Virginia. We're going to do all of this and we're going to do that. How you moving the goddamn team and you ain't going to sell on tickets because ain't nobody going to go to the fucking games. That purple and gold is going to clash with that uniform. I, that's the least of my concerns. We can do hair. Shit. I, I, don't, I don't get it. It's like you take Aaliyah. Fine. That that works for me. But then we keep going. Jalen's on the board. You don't take Jalen. Who is playing point guard? Who is y'all point guard? Me, Lo. It's fucking me. <laughs> I'm signing a 10 day. Well, I'm going to have to uh, suit up for the dream look like. so. Exactly. Me, Mystics. Rob, and Kamala. We playing for the fucking Mystics. Because I don't... <laughs> it's... They just make everything so hard. I don't get it. But again, wait, who is the point guard? Cause it might be Sykes. Cause oh. I know y'all got it's Emily Queen, Mike Shines Allen, Shakira, Dee Dee, Dolson, oh. Dolson, oh Dolson, Carly. Oh. Exactly. It it they just they piss me off. And then on top of that shit, right? He gonna get his ass on the mic and say, Tiana Hawkins is retired. <laughs> and then today he gonna say, actually, my bad. She, what, what the fuck does it mean? Is she playing or not? Like, I don't understand how, what, like, what is happening, bro? So for me, it's just like, if, if the vision is we're gonna get paid next year, fine. But if you don't, I think they gotta move on. I think we gotta start a new, it, oh, everybody gotta go. Because I, to me, not drafting Ryan two years ago is still a big ass mistake, and I, I, I it's like crazy that y'all it. don't write all the articles on that. Y'all write articles on everybody else shit, 
But when I said that they was wrong two years ago, y'all was crying and, oh, you don't trust Tebow? No, I don't. Fuck. I'm so sorry. No, let it out, baby. Let it out. <laughs> it's just, they just don't make the, they, they overthink everything. Everything don't have to be this complicated, bro. Now you don't you don't have a Delanon, you don't have Cloud, you didn't tag like Delanon was like, fuck it, I'm not even gonna play. I'm just gonna retire, bitch. <laughs> I think that's what Tiana did too. She was he called her and she was like, Oh bitch, I, I might be retired. I don't think I'm playing <laughs> with your ass. <laughs> so I don't know, but I think Aaliyah Edwards is gonna be fine. She could hit a midi, like she Obviously, she comes from a good program, so she's gonna be fine. I just don't get the overall vision, so I'm gonna be down at the crypto with the with the sparks. Is y'all only three? Um, Atkins. I mean, Atkins, Sykes. Actually, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, um, in in light of to lighten up the mood, um, to not worry about uh, shades muspics, um, let's. There are a few people in here who actually attended the draft. Um, oh wait, did I to say muspics? That was a that was that's been filed away. Sorry. Um, there are a few people in here who attended the draft. I'm not gonna call you out. Aaron or Odie, but if anyone in here that attended would like to talk about what it was as a fan, Naya, um, the fan experience, um, or being able to actually attend, you know, we would love to hear from you all because we saw you all once again with your cute drinks and stuff. Um, didn't hear, didn't hear enough booze, but we would love to call you up and have you. So I'm gonna just go ahead and invite you all to speak because y'all not raising your hands quick enough for me. Get up. There we go. I should start seeing these them icons start spinning in a little bit. Cause you ain't on no plane, cause you can't you can't stream this on no plane. So you already landed. Get them, B. <laughs> and we'll wait. And we'll wait. Okay, I see it spinning. They're coming up. I know she did. They're not denying us. I'm finna I know curse. they're not. I'm finna curse. Muffin should have called the NYPD. Okay, there we go. They're gonna deny it. Hey, girly. Hey, y'all. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. yeah. We can hear you. Okay. Hey, y'all. What's up? Um. What's good? So it was cute. It was pretty cute. Um. It was a. Okay. So for starters. I just had a regular Douglas ticket. I ain't have the um I didn't get the like other experiences because them shit sold out. Oh my bad. Let me not curse. Or well, let me try not to. Um so all I got all that was left was the rookie joint. So I just got that. Um but I didn't expect like I thought all of the like fans was gonna be sitting like in the, the higher levels, but I didn't expect me and Deji to be able to just like go up there where we was at. Like obviously those were seats that were that were for fans, but I thought like that was gonna be like reserved for the people who pay for the other experiences, but they was like, ah, general admission, go right in. So we just headed down there. It was real, like, everybody was real close. Like, Dawn was like a row and a seat up from us. Like, it was, everybody was real. Like, when Kate Martin got a call, that girl was sitting right behind me. I was like, oh, this is real, like, okay. <laughs> like, I just thought everybody was going, they was going to be like, you know, like a little more off. Like, I didn't think we was going to be that close. Like, Marquisha Davis' table was right in front of us. Like, when the girl stood up, I was damn near on the stage with my little <laughs> wine cup shaking back and forth. Like, yeah, because, like, some of the, you know, some of the other type of Liberty fans, you know what I'm saying? You know, the palm-colored ones, they was, like, real, like, oh, we want we want mule, we want mule. And I was like, sisters and brothers, this is not what we need. Like, <laughs> let's be realistic. So when they called Marquisha Davis, I jumped the fuck up. Like, yeah, bitch. Like, have my, like I said, have my little Prosecco going back and forth. Um, but like, as far as like, uh, as a fan experience, I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty dope. Like, uh, everybody, like I said, everybody was pretty close. Like Jake from State Farm was right there. You know, he a real celebrity. I ain't know people treat him like that. Like, but he a real celebrity. Um, yeah, like I said, it was pretty cool from, from a fan experience. I think maybe next year as they like, um, go to like, maybe, you know, like expand or something like that. 
they might need to not have it at BAM. Like, I'm from Brooklyn, so of course, like, I, let's do everything here. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I, I think, I don't know if what Joe had going on at, at Barclays, but I think it was kind of a miss to not do it in a bigger space. Mm. Um, just because I feel like, like I said, they were so close. Like everybody was like, when, when the girls was getting, when Holly was talking to them girls, if I wanted to, I could have put my foot right on the stage. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just felt like, you should have tripped I don't know. Them. Yeah. Like I could have tripped people. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, I don't know. Like I liked it that I liked that part of it, but I also was like, I wanted them to feel like a little more, you know, like this was like, they, I don't know. Like they moment, like you know, like I'm real, you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, but other than that, like it was, it was seems guy. Yeah, right. Now, I don't know about people with like other experiences or like that had the um, the fancier packages. I've seen that some people did not have great experiences. I don't know about that, but from a general admission standpoint, it was really cool. That lady in the white vest was on one, she had about like four or five cups of wine. She was the one that don't look chance. Like when you say you uh I feel like Yana said she heard like the people talking about you deserve it. That was that lady. She was alone, was wilding. Like all by herself, she was wilding. Like, but I mean, like it was uh, it was cool because it was like, you know, like fans are really excited, people are really hyped. But yeah. You said white vest, and I thought you was talking about Paige. I was about to say No, what? nah. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, um, but Paige and her Tupac fit was close too. Like they her what had, fit? The Tupac fit. Oh brother. I, I called mean, LeBron. Yeah, she she I mean, you know, I'm not gonna talk about that baby because she she got it, you know. But it was a cool experience and I think like from here on out though, they should definitely include like fans because the energy was crazy. Like they was like even like there was a few people like when some other, you know, like once we finished with everybody that was invited and we on like the second round, third round, like some people got really big claps. Like, um, the, the girl from Columbia, cause you know, obviously we in New York. So we had some Columbia people in there. They got high, like, you know, like, so it was like the, the energy in there was, was cool too. Like that was a good part about it. Like, I think again, like that was also something that, you know, maybe these girls will be able to keep like, you know, part of that experience. Like you had like hundreds of people in there clapping and cheering for you. And it wasn't just like your family and stuff. So that was dope. I think what I really liked, especially for Marquisha, I, mean, um, I give Holly a props for that when she turned her around to all of you and and she was able to feel like, you know, her first glimpse of being a part of the Liberty. I think that was a dope moment compared to everybody else whose fans may not have been there or at least you're not in your home, your home city. So that that was dope for her. Yeah, that was real dope. And, you know, they had Ellie coming in and fuck it up like. <laughs> Ellie was Ellie. I hope whoever is in there, they paying them real good because Ellie is always outside, like everywhere. So, yeah, Ellie Never been to the stock us. exchange. And the, the, the lady in the white vest was dancing with Ellie. That's what I'm saying. That lady was on one. So, like, if y'all saw that lady during the the during the live, like during the whole draft, she was really on one. Like, no funny. Appreciate that. Appreciate no that. Problem. Anyone? Huh? Oh, I said no problem. But also. Oh. I mean, like, y'all know, uh, I'm from Brooklyn, so, you know, default, that's the home team. I was very, very happy that we drafted on the colored side, y'all. I was in there screaming. I couldn't believe it. I ain't think, like, no funny shit. I I did not see that for us. I didn't think we was going to do that. I didn't know where they was going. But every time I saw a name pop up, I just, I couldn't believe, I was screaming in there. I was like, let's fucking go. Like, they was looking around at me like, all right, miss, calm down. I'm like, no, y'all don't get it. Like, and I hope they do right by everybody that they need to do right by because they be blowing mine with that shit too out here. <laughs> hold on, we got a few more people who, hold on. I'm, you know, I'm gonna let Aaron and 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 Odie slide. You know, they they probably still traveling. They ain't come up. Let me see. I think that's everybody. Somebody just somebody just left. Who was in here? So, Dolores, you got you want anything to say before um we we get out? We, we've already done the recap of the teams. We know as always you're gonna give us some good juicy meat and potatoes when you recap these drafts. So the floor is now yours. Well, hello, y'all. 
Um, no, I didn't. Like, I thought this was probably one of my favorite drafts in the last, like, seven years, six, seven years. Um, I thought, you know, there were serious winners and serious losers. But I thought, overall, like, it was my favorite draft in just the sense that it felt like the league, ESPN, and everybody invested in the draft and, like, invested in the experience of the draft, which I really appreciated. So I love that. Um, on my Joan Rivers tip, I thought the girls were underwhelming. Like, the fashion was not fashioning. Yes, the it's, you know that conversation we always have about people with money, like, can pay for a look, but can you wear, can you style the look? And that was my, that was my one thing. I didn't love that, okay? I didn't think the girls styled the looks, you know? Um, Rakia won that very, by far. Um, but in terms of team selections and things of that nature, um, I'm going to pray for Atlanta um, real bad. Um, Vegas, smart. Um, Minnesota, unsmart. Um, Chicago, unsmart as well, in my opinion. Um, Connecticut, unsmart as well, in my opinion. Seattle, pretty solid. Um, New York, very smart. Um, Phoenix, Phoenix, um, the Sparks, no spark, um, Indiana, well, they got Caitlin, um, so yeah, I, if I missed anybody, oh, Washington, I'm so sorry, Shay, um, yeah, beautiful gowns, wonderful, wonderful. Gowns. <laughs> who moved the needle the most for you? Um, I can't, I'm not going to do contenders. I have to do non-contenders. Who moves the needle? Um, I personally... Ooh, that's a hard question. It, I'm going to give you two needles. Performance okay. And, okay. and culture. Okay, culture. Mm, I think Vegas wins the culture conversation because I think they brought in like perfect players like perfect because they're if Kate's out for the season they can she can develop and stay around Kitley same thing like to get her that late and that low with the potential to be a decent big because at one point in her career like she was projected a lottery pick now we know that she's not a lottery type player because slow feet but if she can spend the summer, like if she can spend some time with Tyler and them, she gon' she will be a WNBA player. Um, but I think um the Asia Fair was just the perfect. I mean, I don't know how you let that type of player, you can let her go anywhere else, but to let Becky Hammond get the Asia Fair is unfair. Like it's just unfair. They are literally the same player. And, we, you know, everybody keeps saying she's going to learn from Chelsea, but I think even more so she'll learn from Kelsey because Kelsey's a player who is also small for her position. She has she has done a great job with figuring out how to score oversized, around, and all that. And so if you mix in, like, learning how to be a better passer and then just being able to get your shot off, ooh, God, my Jesus, on today. Um, love that. also love the Andrew Jackson pick. Um, in terms of immediate impact, um, I think LA stinks too much to even like say that Rakia can impact because everybody on the team plays the same position as her. Um, so I know everybody keeps saying she's gonna win rookie of the year, but I doubt it. <laughs> um, so no, um, the easy answer is Caitlin. Um, but eh. um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think Camilla could be the steal of the draft in the sense that if they design the team around having a 6-7 post player, which is rare, you know, like we've lost so many dominant bigs in the W, and you have people like Dana Evans, Marina Mayberry, um, Diamond Shields that can create off the bounce, she could be average a double-double easily as a rookie. So in a league that is dominant by post players, if Caitlin doesn't win it, Camilla will. Hmm. Give me your all rookie team. Oh, bitch. Um, 
Well, Atlanta just drafted rookies that they couldn't play, so mm, tomato. Um, Aaliyah Edwards needs to change those braids tomorrow, but no. Um, Caitlin Clark, Camilla, Rakia, Marquisha, Healy. Ooh. So no Brink, no Reese. No. No JC. No. no. I don't like I like what JC to Dallas, but they're not gonna play my girl. They just right, not right. a player. And I like Brink to LA, but they about to put her on an island. For her position. Yeah, she because she, I'm assuming they're gonna play her at the five, which baby, she's gonna be ooh, Jesus. Like, Camilla's advantage is you can't, like, she is 6'7". Like, she gonna block somebody, you know? Like, she gonna get a rebound. She gonna make a layup. Cam is about to be in hell. Because she about to be playing with um, Podcast, Podcast, Lexi, um, Quarter Zip, Zaya, um, like, these, uh, no, oh, bless her heart. Yeah, so yeah, no wonderful gowns. Okay, so I think that that wraps us up for tonight. Yes. Oh yes. wait, you're not gonna cover the what? Hap- did something happen in the the portal? Oh the yes, yes, yes. Let's go to the portal. Stay, bitch. Stay on topic. <laughs> um, <laughs> my Buckeyes are back, bitch. I love that roster. Love it. I think so far, no matter what anyone else... Oh, that's too early. They, No matter what anyone else does, they are still a top three team that they've gathered out of the portal. They, I, I, like, if we're talking about portal rankings, they got to be top Yes, five, portal probably. rankings, no yeah. matter who anyone else gets, they are already top three. Yeah, I agree. Like, a team can go and get Kiki... And whoever else is in the portal, like, and Haley Van Lith, it doesn't move them above. Um, well, HBO HBO don't HBO move them. The negative. I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be nice here, guys. But, like, no matter what any other team gets, Ohio State is already top. They've secured their spot for top three for sure. That is and a I really think, nice team. Going I think on. what makes their – their moves so impressive is it's needed moves, right? It's That's not just word. big names. And I think we've seen teams go after big names and obviously it doesn't work. But if you can get pieces that you need, because you already have like a Cody, you already have theory and they're just getting pieces to put around them that fit McGuff's system. And so I like, it's a well-rounded uh, portal. Yeah, they know Juju coming, so good luck because y'all oh, underwhelmed this year. Y'all underwhelmed this year. Hope you can live up to the hype. Not Juju too much of my girls. Let's not be nasty and rude, okay? <laughs> Let's no, not. but they hooping for real. I'm, I I really like what they've done, what they put together. Like, it's a cohesive unit, whereas last year, I feel like when they was putting people together, we was all up here like, it could work, but like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think when it, in terms of like we've been saying like they needed a mobile big like a mobile can get up and down the floor rebound out of position and stretch the floor a little bit and i think asia petty like hits every single marker that they've needed in a big like in my opinion had they had petty la- not this year but last year that's a final four team like they easily um get into the final four so i'm happy that they got the piece they got. I think if anything, like if I'm nitpicking, I still want to see them get a spot up shooter because I think with the press that they run, like they've got to have somebody that can shoot from the three. But as of now, that is my favorite um, portal portal group as of now. We've seen a few names enter the portal since our last spaces. Um, uh, Dave Wilson has entered. Um, who else? Um, a few Miami see, people I here. Mean, Rogers, who's entered the portal. <laughs> Kiki Ariafin technically yeah. has entered since our last yes one. We got, uh, you know, 
attacked for hoping, but since then, <laughs> he's officially left. And we've Greedy. seen um, some more of Degrees Oregon are better State. than rings. <laughs> some, some more Oregon State players have entered, as well as, what's the young lady's name from Colorado? My goodness, Von Lay. Von Lay. Yeah, Von Lay has entered. You we've also seen some name. people don't decide play. on their institutions. Why you don't know her name? Do you want to fight? I, I like to I like to make sure that I pronounce it correctly. So if not, I'll oh, defer. Oh 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 <laughs> oh oh. Yes, Miss Von Lay. Thank you. Um, um, and you know, it, since then there have been some coaching hires, um, some promotions, and fires. And some some fires, and, and some rehires and, and refires. Re <laughs> yes, so we've seen we've seen a lot. Um, the young lady at uh at, at Tennessee has officially announced her staff. Which looks like a staff that could actually get her some seats in the cheeks. I mean, some cheeks in the seats. So, <laughs> and so, um, you know, the Tennessee's head coach. There was a lot going on. Uh, there were a lot of words being shared um, by the fan base. They were kind of they were kind of torn down the middle because, um, you know, she, who she decided not to keep. Um, we've seen Anaya Russell announce her decision to go to Mississippi State. She's on her third SEC institution, and we know the SEC it just means more. Um, but Villanova, it means, it means too much sometimes. It it really does. It, it never more means more enough to me. No, please, it means too much for it some does of these not. girls. Villanova has lost quite a few places. Lu my good sis Lucy Olsen gonna be a steal. Whoever gets her. Gonna win some games. Where would you? Okay, where do you think is the best fit for her? That's the ACC, Big Ten, Mama. Pick one conference and stay there. Mm, okay. Layla Felia is in the portal, so there are a lot of different names in there. So now, who do you think re-ranking? Oh, oh, brother. So Sedona Prince has announced that she will be coming oh, back. Oh, brother. That lady is my age. <laughs> Mayori Davenport has also Obama entered administration. the Mayori Davenport has entered the portal. She has also been that baby since my the age Obama too. administration. <laughs> so, oh. so we know that Haley Van Liff was on a visit to Mississippi State. So who is the best portal get out there? Out not named Kiki. And I'm not naming um Candace Owens in Oregon. Um <laughs> I think um wait Lucy Olsen she gonna be a good one I think Von Lay's a steal uh it's hard to get WBBs you know I agree and um she's gonna be like a, a steal I think it's somebody a lot of people probably won't talk about but I think she can be a game changer for a few programs that just is a big away from being good if if she goes to the right team, Philia will be the steal. What's the right team oh, for yeah, her? She's still out there. I like she has to go to a team that needs a defensive scoring guard. Mm -hmm. So UCLA would be a perfect pit fit, in my opinion, because um, she has size. She's not afraid. Um, that like, and she fits in with the three sweet girls over there. Um, <laughs> she could give, she could even do make some shake. Um, honestly, if you send her to Kentucky, her like and Georgia Amore together could be filthy. Oh, um, ooh, that's another one. Tiana Key has announced that she's going yeah, to, yeah, like because they, you remember when Kentucky made their final four run, they had our good sis, um, the Purdue girl, um. Lord, I'm gonna tell her name. I uh, can't remember. Um, she dated um Fletcher. Um, Kiana, Kiana? Virginia Tech. Kiana Trailer. Yes, Kiana trailer. trailer. Very similar, but I think um Philia is an even better player than that. Oh yeah. So, oh, see, Philly I was when you said Kentucky Final Four. I was like, huh? No, I'm. Tech. I was. What, gotcha. I'm talking about Virginia Tech. You think Philia defense is good as Trailers? Yeah, better. Okay. Yeah, I think Philia is. Like, she, it was so interesting seeing her on Michigan because she just didn't fit, you know, like, play style-wise, she didn't really fit. Um, So if she was on a team where she wasn't the primary scorer but could get her rocks off, I think she could, like, do her big one at Kentucky. Like, she's going to need a complimentary guard um, and a big. So I think the, the two programs I just mentioned are – 
perfect. There's some other ones as well, but I think those two would be really dope. Which coach, player, which coach do you trust to go and find their ram in the bush? Which coach? I'm going to always stick with Don Michelle Staley because, baby. <laughs> um, I think if UConn gets beers, the, the bush going to be m- r- burning. Like, you know, that's that they could date, especially given the conference they play in and basically using conference play as a glorified practice season anyways. Baby, that that would be a well oiled machine come March. Mm. I'm gonna go with Coach G because she knocked it out the park with the nerds. Nobody saw that coming. You right, you right. Yeah. But y'all got that damn big ass class, baby. Y'all you just no. I, I want to see that. That's T. I want to see how she manages that, especially how she manages that with how Juju likes to play and her usage. I now if she managed that and, and shake that up. I, I respect because that's that's hard. That's hard. Yeah. I yeah. mean, we gonna see. I think for me, if we can get a score in four, I think that opens it up for everybody else, and then let the freshmen fill in the gaps. But she got her work cut out. Like, yeah, I, oh yeah, and I'm not saying she can't at all. I'm just saying no, I no, can't. no. I think it's a great point you make. It. I uh-huh. think her and like a lot of the coaches are trying going to try. The thing that Dawn is great at is managing personalities and expectations. Yep. And you got all these people who want to be in the portal and want to bring in these big freshman classes, but mm-hmm. can you keep them? Yep. yep. So it's interesting to see if she's going to be able to keep them or if it's going to – like some one or two are transfer. That's just the way the game goes. But what what you going to do when, you know, you got kids coming up to you and saying, hey, you told me I was going to play 30 minutes a night and you brought in such and such and she eating into my time. Yeah. Maybe as too. long as she um, keeps Kennedy Smith happy – Y'all good. Oh, I, oh, can we talk about that game? Cause yes, because yeah, I want to. Wait, did y'all you see that the Iowa State girl committed to Colorado? Which yes. one? Uh, um, the fro, pretty skin in the fro. Oh, yes. do yeah. do. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm. She could she could do something. I like that. Oh, and she and she gonna have to play her old team. They going to because Colorado's moving to the Big Twelve. Yeah, but slow key before we go to the high school game, um, Notre Dame could 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 turn themselves back into a Final Four team if Lord Jesus, high key if if they can get two people out the portal. Who are those two that you think they should? They get? need a big. They need a big, and they need a a backup three because they just lost um uh uh, uh Bransford. And 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 we know Citron is amazing, but Jesus, you know, once some girls get injured, the second one be always looming. So, um, fingers crossed, knock on wood and all that. But I think they need another a shooter. Like they got the little short girl that played some minutes this year. Um, but they'll get Cass Prosper back, um, who can play the three four type position. But I think they need a shooter and a big, or maybe just two bigs. Pick one of that. Meet pick one of them. And Is honestly, if they got Vonley, baby, game changer. Cause y'all, <laughs> y'all remember how they had that good girl from Texas looking when they only had her for one year? Who the wide back being from Texas? Ebo. 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 Oh, oh, oh! She didn't look. She awesome. looked good for them. She looked she good, good for, for Notre Texas. Dame. I guess. Playing for the Nigerian national team last time I checked. Yeah, I mean, oh, uh, this young lady from Stanford. Um, they had she was solid too. Uh, they were tr- they were fighting um, to get an um, extra um, year I'm for from her. Georgia. We thought she was moving home. She said, "No, I'm going." To right. She, <laughs> now that's the move. She transferred to move closer to home. You end up in Indiana, girl. Please, but yes, Maya Dotson. That's her name. So they could find if Prosper goes there. I mean, Vonley goes there. That that's that is a good one. So go ahead to the high school game. The girl he's tried to uh he he ha ha uh Joyce and Joyce said, got your he he ha ha up on me. <laughs> oh we uh, like she she was pulling out some stuff. I'm like, now wait a minute, Miss Ma'am. 
Like, so, so who were your three? Give me three, your three favorites that you saw during that game. If oh, you yeah, have three too. favorites. Oh, oh, I my other one was uh Toby, Toby Kennedy and Joyce. I'll go with an additional one and add uh Kate Caval to that from the ones yeah. who from Notre Dame. I thought like those four looked really good. It's some dogs on that world team. Good grief, bro! But I think oh, Dolores, I think it. Dolores and Lowe were saying it in the chat. The point guards for the USA. Oh my gosh. Terrible. It was, but when bad. we got, but because we, we don't, re- I probably we don't. Re- do you? After I watched the draft last night, shit, I don't want to be no point guard. Like the way that the league and they just don't, they disrespect point guards. You want all these big guards who can't goddamn dribble, dribble off their foot, dribbling slow, dribbling, looking like me out there. We don't, we don't. No, we like Christy do Wallace catching that <laughs> We got to get back to our roots. We need point guards. We need real point guards. Please bring back real point guards. We need it. The girlies are struggling. At one point, I don't even say I don't. I think it was like halfway through the fourth quarter. It said that Team USA had thirty-four turnovers, and I was like, "What? Like, how do you even like that? Is insane to me. Thirty-four turnovers, even at the high school level exhibition game. That is nuts. That is disgusting." But they was getting cooked. I fell asleep during the first half because they was. I was like, "Oh, they, yikes!" I'm gonna just go ahead and take a nap. And then I woke up, and they were still down by 15. Ah, weak. <laughs> <laughs> but then Joyce started getting in her bag. Kennedy started getting her bag, and I was like, "Oh shit, they coming back!" But I think the difference maker was really just the fact that they started playing defense. Like in the beginning, their defense was really bad. Really bad. Can I? How tall? How tall is Sarah Strong? Six two. Six I think. three or six two. How six, tall is six three? How tall is Joyce? I think the same. Same three. size. Same, the same height. Okay, because mm, that's interesting. It honestly gives, to be honest, it gives Asia and Stewie same height ish, like. Kind of the same build. One's more of a power, like one's more of a a four post player, and then the other one's a four guard. Like Stewie has the guard like skills, but Asia's dominant in the post. Both great fours, but just different type of skill set. I haven't seen the only thing that would concern me about Sarah is that she'll learn is like because she's that I've never really seen her in the paint. But I need I I don't I don't like when I see her play. What's that last game? If she just was kind of shooting it, so I would want to see like what she looks like when she has to bang against big bodies. Mm-hmm. So Stewie, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> She'll be good in the Big East. Oh yeah, she's gonna be fine. I don't have I don't have, I don't have, she don't have no issues. Yeah, no, I just was like they. I didn't realize that they were considered the same height. I, that's mm-hmm. the part. Yeah, mm-hmm. Joyce looked huge on the court. BDE. <laughs> she was out there ripping people. I was like, oh, bitch, turn me up. Let's go. She got she got to uh, tie, tie that hair up, though. Oh, yeah. That... It'll be in her way. Tie that shit up. <laughs> okay, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Liz, it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Super Saiyan out there chopping people in the neck. Like, please, ma'am. Okay. Um, anything else that you all have to add tonight before we mosey on over? I only have one thing to say about because I think the Caitlin Clark shit has just gone off the fucking rails in all directions and it's become annoying. But all I have to say about it is look. The white savior shit y'all are doing, not only is it disrespectful to the women who have been in this league and been 10 toes down in this shit, you're not doing her no fucking favors. So Mm -mm. I'm exhausted. I am tired. I don't want to hear no more about it. Just start the goddamn training camps, please. I felt so bad for Raymonte, y'all. I think he was genuinely asking, like, he got ate up, but I think he was genuinely confused. And they ate him (laughs) off. Did y'all see his tweet? Yeah. I feel bad. I I really I really do think because if, if people could step outside themselves for a bit, 
it is a little confusing. Like, wait a minute. That girl lost. I watch. I know enough to know because everybody not tapped in because, like you said, women's basketball is becoming much bigger. So I'm not tapping in enough to know the ins and outs, but I'm tapping enough in enough to know she fucking lost. Her team lost. And I don't realize, okay, well, maybe they just invited Caitlin Clark and she invited the team. I don't I don't know that. So, so I don't know why people can't see that from the outside looking in. Yeah, yeah, what was T? What I'm confused. Like they lost. I don't I don't I don't think that's a hard thing to understand. And he really got ate up. And it's not, people want to it's take not, everything as a slight. They want to but I think upset, one of the issues as shade. One of the issues is that a lot of people think that um the new viewers are solely because of Caitlyn. I think like yes, Caitlyn Clark has played a role in the increase of viewership. I won't take that away from her, but I also do think that there are people joining the game and watching the game just because of everything else outside of that the hype around march madness and all of that stuff i think a lot of people are kind of being brought into that without any knowledge of caitlin clark i think there are some people who have not seen her play and they maybe don't know the magnitude of the fact that she just scored you know broke the scoring record or she does this and that that's been like highlighted all season there's people who don't know that and so for him he prob like he probably dead ass didn't know it was just Seriously. like wait why is the loser on the <laughs> on SNL? like he probably dead ass didn't know he was serious he was serious I felt so bad <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad like he was he was super serious he just didn't understand <laughs> bless his heart. Go ahead, Dolores. Uh, I'm with Lo. I do feel bad because it was people that was yep, like quoting him, like Kayla did this and she did that and she died on the cross for the basketball <laughs> sins. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> and I think I wish we could also acknowledge, like they be trying to pit. Well, Angel did this, Kayla did this. It's two different Americas. It's two different cultures in basketball. We see it in the WNBA. We see it in college. Y'all, I know, and Kayla, y'all can say, well, she's one skill, all of that shit, great. But ain't y'all not gonna act like Angel ain't ain't change the shit like angel is everything to these kids and black culture like y'all not gonna act like she is she's not so i feel like it's just two separate worlds and people just have to acknowledge that but people got to be able to take a step outside of themselves and the first thing is oh you just hating on caitlin honey it's so many more other women in the league. if i'm gonna hate on somebody that got drafted i'm hating on rakia because that's a bad bitch <laughs> not caitlin it's i <laughs> I think to Lowe's point, like, it's so layered, right? Like, the the media darling, the narrative is Caitlyn, 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 Caitlyn. But the reality is, is that Caitlyn wouldn't be Caitlyn without Angel. And then when you flip it to that side, there's a whole community, a race, a cultural group of people that see Angel as the star. Yep. I mean, we literally just had a conversation about Angel being better than Asia in college because there's a community of people that know women's hoops because of Angel. Then Bingo. under that, under that, then you have a subgroup of people that know really talented black players like Rakia, like Camilla, like others that are in the like the Asia Fair. So it's like when we have these conversations, I now like I've gotten to the point where I'll just say the tweet and if it go crazy and people cuss at me or try to be funny. I just kind of mute it, but because it's like people will join a conversation that they don't know anything about, no context, no new nuance, no background information, no understanding, and then talk to you like you ain't been like somebody called Low a casual the other day and trip quad fucking drupal down on it seventeen <laughs> times like this girl don't know every or hasn't done something with the majority of the players that he was talking to and talking about. So that's why, like, all of this is so crazy to me is because as the game continues to grow and as we get more eyes and stuff on the league, we are going to continue to encounter these new people that think they know and don't know and are ready to educate you on something and tell you that you're making a narrative when you're only pointing out the prevailing narrative from the other side that they are unaware of. Like, it's just, it's so much happening so it's just, you know, I just pray pray all of our strength in the Lord. Um, I pray to God for <laughs> traveling mercies um, and the peace. Well, I, 
I just, I just, I guess to me, it, it it's only frustrating because I think they say if if they think if I'm saying, oh, we need this, and that means less of this. No, both. Damn, we got we exactly. we're not stupid. Like we could think, well, that's growing the game. Y'all talked about this season and the parody this season, how great it was, and this is the best season, and there's still one team that went under fucking feeded with no superstars. That's that's some shit. That's that's dope. I so it's not less of this, it's just more, more, like more, more. Everybody girl, let's talk about all of it. We got time, like, and I don't understand how people can't understand that. Like, you just being a fan of one person, that's not growing the game. That's growing that person. And the like, du- and the W is not doing like ESP and the W because who 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 is there when these people are gone? Like, I mean, they looked up when the as DT was rounding out her career, we got Sabrina and Caitlin and Paige as the next three great white players. But, like, they are going to always have to build narratives around those players because those are the only people that they believe can be the face. Like, I, I just think, oh, yeah, we just got to, they just got to do a better job. Like, I mean, it's whatever. It, yeah, it is what it is. I pray, again, I pray our strength and yours as we go up at these highways and byways and these Twitter streets. Um but it's it's gonna be a fun summer. Um, Praying for tweeting mercies. Yeah, y'all be easy, cause if it ain't, I'm gonna be outside. Yeah, oh baby, with my thong on. Period. Period. Well, I got me. One. I got I'm me ready. a nice one with some lace. I'm. Ooh. Yeah, I like See, I like earth tones though. You like bright colors. I like earth tones. No, baby, Swift I just tones. got me a um a nice little deep minty green. Uh, I won't. I won't. I won't brown to match my skin tone. Oh, I already so, have that. Okay, and right, nude. Right, right. I'm wearing mine right. above Clico. Go ahead, Shay. All y'all bitches that was in here crying on Twitter all day, writing think pieces or how much people make and all that shit. I want to see your bitch ass in a thong at the goddamn game. Buy the tickets. Buy the jersey. Buy the merch. Bring your ass down to the crypto or the Connecticut, wherever the hell you at. I want to see you after game if you care that goddamn much. Y'all know what's funny? That girl was in my DMs on TikTok. Like, she asked me about some tech course, and I didn't respond. She's been in a lot coming, of people DM trying to sell She kept them coming courses. back on, was like, oh, so you ghosted me? Girl, I never... What? <laughs> <laughs> it, I promise you. Will. I said, oh, that's that girl. But do y'all notice, like, it's a, it's a brand of people that keep doing it. Because y'all remember that other real le- weird lady... That was on the app talking about salaries and why she stopped playing professionally. Because that woman in wasn't. Texas or something? Yes, like, oh, it's so. And um, somebody was just pointing. They were like, you know, oh, now Plaz just got here yesterday, too, so he don't really have no room to be telling people they just got here. But anyways, um, they've been saying, you know, like, why is everybody so upset about salaries this year? And the reason is, is that when it was black women that was complaining about being poor, y'all just told them they asked to get in the kitchen. Now it's it's white women and y'all trying to talk about pay equality. That's the difference. Like once once they realize, like, oh, Caitlyn going pro, then bitch said, hold up, let me get my Susan B. Anthony on, and baby, we got to be on the front lines. But hell, when when damn just two last year. Um, Jordan Cannon and all them was like, we got to work another job, multiple streams of income. I need to be an assistant. Y'all didn't give a rat's ass. They Shit. tried to eat Skylar up because of her comments. I mean, so I be, it's so weird and y'all don't understand it. And so when we talk about race, I'll be so lost because it's clear as day. Y'all didn't care until it was a white woman. We got a few hands raised. Hold, come on up, Greg. Not the Greg. He must got an empty schedule today. What's going on? Lo, what did I do to you today? <laughs> um, I haven't decided yet. Give me five minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Congratulations <laughs> on Dana and that extension. Amen. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yep, it was a uh, good thing coming. So we uh we excited about it, and we got, you know, got some stuff happening, so. Well, tell my good sister I need a bundle for Camilla. I need two bundles because I know she got them. Two bundles for Camilla. Um, and, we need and, a blue one. And me. 
Oh, a blue one would be not a, a blue one. A, a blonde, what color? Blue? A, I know I know blue a, bundles. A, a yes. blonde, a blonde like a honey blonde on Camilla would eat that. Oh, uh, she going right. Dana going. She's going to take care of her. Um, Wonderful. You need like you know a what's crazy? It's a, like it's a, a um, oh, I see it. It's a nice size. Um, as far as you look at demographics for Chicago, as far as like Latin America and just like Bra- Brazil, it's a like a decent. Oh, like, so they got some restaurants for my good sis. Wonderful. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Like she's on, she's gonna love Chicago. Okay, well, just keep her out the hood. Okay, I know that's the hood niggas be at, but. Keep her out of the hood. Oh, that lady can handle herself. <laughs> right, we've seen it. Let me. Yeah, she, she's gonna, she's gonna enjoy. It. But everybody doing good. We are blessed, highly favored. We're blessed in this. Oh, I know that wasn't low. Come Y'all on, low. sounded good too. Come on, low. Finish it, low. Finish it. Finish it. On key. Finish it. You heard that? That was that was, low, that, that was low. That was low singing. Wow. No. We bless when we come and when we go. Come on, low. Cause I was I y'all like y'all we... start like a I grew up AME and I was on the praise dance team in the choir. Please stop. <laughs> come on, AME. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Baby, she running away from God, but he gonna always bring you back. Cause he gonna bring you back. How the can Andy, I? The Andy church to do that to you sometimes, but that's okay. <laughs> Running back. The seven, the seven, they follow me on TikTok. I don't know why, child. The Andy Seven District. <laughs> so, Greg, I got a question. What's what's the temperature yep. like? Not the not the actual weather, but like what what has it been like? And I know it's early since the draft ear last to the night. Streets. We asked yeah. about your ear, ear to, to the streets. Your ear to the streets. What's what it's like so far mm-hmm. in Chicago with the with the picks that that are coming in? Right. So yesterday, um, I didn't go to New York for the draft. So I stayed, uh, went to Chicago for the actual party that they had. And it was legit over 250 people at like at its peak that was there. And I know um, other uh, teams had like their own variation of, you know, draft parties and uh, whatnot. And the level of excitement and talk that's been going on throughout the Chicagoland area is, is, is dope to see. Um, and I think it's because it's two players that embody like that Chicago Midwest <laughs> kind of spirit. So, and they, they both of them play so hard and, and you saw it. And um, so everybody's excited. I mean, I'm sure. Have y'all seen like some of the prices of the tickets? Well, no, I'm, I'm just going to come to you. Cause no, the response was great. I mean, I don't know if y'all seen some of the, the videos um, from the party, but um, people was excited. They were happy. Um, it's, I mean, I think every news channel um, has been talking about them. Every um, um, sports show within like the Chicago area has been talking about them. Um, and even from a national level, it's been a lot of talk as well too. And um you know, you see it with just overall excitement throughout the city. But I mentioned like the Indiana Fever game. I think that game's already sold out, if I'm not mistaken. But resale wise, I think the average ticket resale now is like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. That that's wow. That's like ridiculous. you got like like you got some you have some seats that's at the uh all right, so be I mean you've been to Wintrust. So you know the um um I guess you say like row like CC that's like a couple behind uh, the player benches. Mm-hmm. Like some of those tickets is like thirteen hundred. That is Ooh. insane. Yeah, so got- it's it's crazy how how it is. Um, and then when you look at the other games um, throughout the season, like those prices have went went up. So for the people that probably like locked in their season um, tickets prior to the draft, they definitely winning. And for the people. Who waited? They definitely about to come out some coins for sure um, to be at some of those games. So, do you feel as though? So, what were your thoughts on the draft picks? That you know, obviously, you know, you have you mm-hmm. have a player that's there, but yeah. like, how how are you feeling when you saw those names come across the um, TV? Well, for me, I I was like, I mean, it was three names that I have been locked in on um it's crazy how things come full circle because like even rakia jackson so 
I have a um with my company we have a couple of high school basketball events that I run throughout the season. And one event that I have is Hoops for Pink, which is pretty much um it's all girls varsity teams. And in the uh inaugural year, Rakia played in the first one, her high school, um, Detroit Edison. So to see her drafted was pretty cool. Um and like I said, my three that I had was Rakia, Camilla, and Angel. And I was like, I just need two out of the three. And it's crazy because I told Michael, I was like, mm, I'm like, Camilla going first. And I don't I just thought that I'm like, man, she she brings so much to the table. Um obviously her height, but I just love how she plays, she runs, she communicates. And one of the things that it's hard to teach is uh, just coming from a winning culture and winning. Like that's hard. Like it's like to get people to buy into that is something that, you know, very few can do. So when you can get someone that is a winner, a champion with um, the skills that she has on both ends of the floor, it's kind of like a no brainer for that one. Uh, I definitely thought Rakia would do extremely well in Chicago as well too. But I mean, that's tough. Angel, um, she plays with an edge. A lot of people have been saying, you know, her skill set, this and that. But one thing that analytics and people with notepads and pens really can't look at is like your heart and how hard you play. That's something that you can't measure. Um, I think overall she would get better. I mean, hell, this is her job now. That's all she has to focus on. And that's all she's doing. So she's going to get better. Um, so I'm interested to see how both of them do. Um, I like it. Um to me, they are players that uh, are cut from the same cloth as far as like where we come from. Uh, I know Dana was happy and extremely excited to to hear both of them. Um, I think she probably was the first guy player to tweet something out yesterday in regards to both of the, the young ladies getting drafted. And she's ready to roll and, and get going with them. And this is kind of like the first time she's had um, like a like a real big that can get busy uh in ball screens with her like that at the pro level so i know that's something that she's interested in seeing as well um but if one thing you know uh with chicago and teaspoon being the coach like that team's gonna be gritty that team's gonna be tough and they're gonna, they're gonna play hard um and that's what a city of chicago needs so i told y'all greg ass was gonna mess this thing up i told you give me five minutes and look how you doing Lauren? <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, hey, also, y'all got to tell me, like, what type of um, colognes and perfumes y'all like. Um, Sauvage, Dior, uh, Bacchus. So, uh, so, we, so we, um, obviously, we did, with, with Telefair, we did a, a partnership where. With Telefair, that's their name? I be saying Telfair, is that wrong? Um, yeah, that's wrong. It's all, no, it's, something it's else, good. Dolores. It's, it's all good. Don't worry about it. But. Within oh. that, it's gonna be it's gonna be some pretty unique stuff that's that that we're doing that um it's gonna Y'all it's gonna be it nice. Country and broke. I like Santal, <laughs> Jungle Santal. What is Telefair, Greg? I don't know them. <laughs> He's gonna keep chopping their name up. Okay, it's what um it? Telefair, Telefairy. <laughs> You gotta pronounce the whole name. You only doing half of the name. What's the rest? Pharaoh. Oh, like Pharaoh Rochelle, the chocolate. Oh my god. Oh, oh, any, any, anyways, so uh we <laughs> we got some pretty cool things coming with them where um you know uh Dana, Azra, and Tiff are gonna have um a lot of um input on the beauty lines and fragrances and different things that are, are coming out under that with that partnership. So it's going to be cool. So y'all got to give me an idea of some of the scents that y'all like. And cause they have some pretty nice stuff now, but on top of that, Dana, uh, Azra and Tiff are going to create their own um, perfumes and fragrances as well. And we got some other stuff coming too. Well, call, if they need a model, call me. Greg, oh, send us some white diamond. Send some white diamond. Send us some raise that. Wait, what about bomb. the raise that? Y'all are really, what blue. the hell is this stuff? White all diamond for is, old people. Exactly. That's what I'm sending. Send, we got old people in here. <laughs> Be inclusive. No, I'm, no. y'all, we got to go to the, y'all don't get y'all oils from the flea market. That Dolores, through work her. No, boy. No. 
Y'all didn't go to the flea market and get the little oils in the little black top that had the, the scent on the side, handwritten? No. I know exactly what you're talking about. No, I y'all know. People, I, 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 y'all I, I, not black. Y'all, I know those at the gas station, black. so I got mine. <laughs> no. My, when my daddy passed, he, he me and my brother went into his bathroom and got all of his little scents. In the, we no, had a little blue that. one, we had the gold one, and we rubbed them things right on our arm, um, the right under mm-hmm. my little palm of my hand. Put some Vaseline on it, make it last longer. Y'all didn't do that. Oh wow! No, I wore Juicy Couture and and Victoria's Ooh. Secret. Well, y'all, Lord, you wore curl. Curl. The middle curl. Curl. You wore you wore Juicy Couture. How old were you? Uh, that was when I like when I was like in college. Oh, okay. not fresh. Y'all. Did I... Okay. Then the Lord's wore curves or. B, I just sent you the website so you can look at the different um Dior Savage. Savage is not bad. Who's now that? Now I like uh it's something called Santal Vanille. And I like Baccarat. I like that. You are everybody, so everybody well, B, you like better that. get one of your <laughs> Baccarat. Baccarat. You, you know black people. Black people. <laughs> <laughs> you are inward. people. You are in word. Oh man. Dolce and Gabbana light blue. So are we going to see Ooh, some of this blue at All Star? Yeah, so have a, a scratch it's, funny, it's funny you mentioned All Star. So I didn't have. Oh, a, we not uh, going. Who not going? None, None of, of us. us. For real? I, ain't nobody got time for that. We need a separate event for the blacks. Oh my god! Ah oh, man, you, well you gonna miss out? We don't go to Arizona. What? What do my? I am albino. Okay, the sun is gonna <laughs> fry me like an egg. <laughs> Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going on the Diana Fair- Fairwear tool. Grow the game, but grow without me. Okay. <laughs> the sun is gonna fry me like an egg. <laughs> when y'all, when I tell y'all, I almost died in Vegas, y'all. I had to walk from the stadium all the way to my hotel because my phone died. No, well, you didn't walk. You didn't Arizona. walk indoors. No, it was. I had to go outside. It, what was your hotel? Nah, was it's, it's Baby, yeah, I about y'all, to say you. you I almost, walk, y'all, the, y'all know the ace is on the other end of the strip. Y'all, my hotel is at the beginning of the strip by the mall. You could walk through almost every building, so you don't have no, to go No, no, my take little the, take the my little train. forehead was the color yeah. of a ripe, a good old ripe apple. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, okay, so y'all yeah, going to Phoenix. Well, all right, B, we um, all right. We what was your have question? Them in Chicago. <laughs> B gonna be there. He's lying. <laughs> B got money. B, what was your question? You said what? <laughs> we gonna have a sna- a, a scratch and sniff um kiosk. We not we not doing no scratching and no sniffing, but we we got some other stuff that's happening. Yeah, I don't know about none of that. B, why are you wheezing? <laughs> I just pictured everybody just coming up and rubbing it like the Apollo stuff. Oh uh, yeah, no, we can't stand, man. No, we not. We got so um obviously I didn't have anything for Final Four because we were gearing up actually for for Phoenix All Star. So it's gonna be, man, it's gonna be a couple of different things that we're doing. Um, but yeah, um, the Frankers brand, um, they'll well, be there, and some of the other partners partnerships that we have, they they'll be there too. You really not going? They're gonna be there. Where the hell you think we getting all this yeah. money from? Okay, this, if y'all want the committee, if y'all want the committee in Arizona, I need y'all to start the committee fund, and um, <laughs> I will, oh, I will only go if y'all help fund it. Okay. Who got the brand out there? Which one of y'all coaches in Arizona? We can have a TED Talk series, a live hey, recording. Hell, if one of y'all provide the Airbnb and all, I gotta do is get the flight, then I will come. Any brands out here trying to sign up? <laughs> Who got their tax money? I'm I'm sure it's the real life. We gon we gonna talk. I'm sure it is a it's a brand out here that definitely will take care of that for y'all though. Hell Come we on. can talk to, we can talk to that lady that says she make more than WNBA players. She might be able to <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> the lady with the desk the... job. Oh, oh, I saw that. Yeah, she's wilding. <laughs> that's the one that said she had a scholarship but didn't didn't take the scholarship. The song yeah, yeah, Angel Random Stats. <laughs> yeah, okay. Today been crazy though. Like no. it's been it's been a lot going on today on on Twitter. When A said to fund my trip. Hold up, y'all. Let me ask her. It y'all? was the C minus for me. <laughs> yeah, the C minus was crazy. Like I don't I don't know how you get Chicago Sky with a C minus grade on the draft. Like that that just tells me it's anti black. Oh, that's exactly what it is. But 
Yeah, it is what it is, though. But yeah, that was crazy to say. But um, it's how loud they is with it. Like it's been loud, but like, damn, like we we getting all these millions of views and still, got them. like y'all you know don't I mean? do it. It ain't overt. I mean, it ain't um covert no more. It's gonna get worse though. Oh yeah, for sure. The more, the more, and that's what people don't really talk want to talk about. Like the more money comes into the W, the worse that's gonna be. Yes, they about to price us out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you, I think I can't go nowhere now. Damn sure ain't gonna be going. I'm about to watch right here on this cable. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to um, ask Mama either for the friends and family discount because I can't do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but serious question, Greg. Um, mute your mic so you won't get in trouble. Um, how long um until our first kerfuffle um in the Indianapolis locker room? Oh, before All Star. <laughs> Shit, that might happen. I give it to training camp week two. Yeah, I think we ain't getting out of training camp. <laughs> Teaspoon doing the roughing. I said Indianapolis, not Chicago. Oh my bad. You said mute your mic, so I, I didn't know who you was. Directing. No, I meant Greg, not you, Craig. Oh, Greg. I'm, not, I'm not Greg. My bad. You right. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, Greg. <laughs> I, I can see the first month gonna be peaches, and, peaches and creams and sunshine. After that, it's gonna be like, damn, y'all. No, it's not. Happen. They gotta pick a starting five, Brandon. Oh, but the people who I think the ish, nobody who they just like, paid Katie Lou Samuelson a bag to go be a glorified um home house mother in the sorority house. You gotta start her. You gotta start coming. I mean, at least uh, Aaliyah and Alyssa. That's three starters already. That means so one of them one, bit one of them two hundred thousand coming off the bench. Correct. The That's one that ain't been in that picture. <laughs> oh yeah, she wasn't. In and the she team. the highest paid player on the team in the league. She got a lot going on though. I'm not going. Yeah. Not that one. The other one. Go look at the picture Indiana posted about them season tickets. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me go look. And one yeah. person missing. She's not in it. Rest in peace to the other one. Amen. Prayers. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to have to make some decisions. Unless they have that conversation with Katie Lou. Hey, you know, we're paying you, but we just let us go ahead. And then if they do that, I'm going to cuss Lynn out. Slam out. Because you did that for no reason. Like, because nobody's bringing nobody $200,000 off the bench. That or, that makes no two. sense. So, But they're going to have to because the other player is making over $200,000. Caitlin's starting. So that's three. That's three spots. Oh, brother. They yeah. gonna, ain't no way they don't start Caitlin. Shit, slept on, my, slept on might be the one left out. Shit. But, oof. Mm-hmm. She gonna force that trade. Her, her brother in the boots. We got a um, we got a hand raised, and I think this is a Chicago fan. Cherbs, come on up. Oh, we got new blood. I like having new friend, new friends. I don't see nobody, Brandon. You done broke. You done broke the game. Oh, I see the picture. <laughs> I don't see nothing. No, not no on the on the Indiana page. Send it to the chat. Okay. All right. Turbs, are you there? It's spinning. You spin my head right round, right round. When you go down, when you go down. Y'all, that was so nasty, and we was in middle school just rocking to that thing. Turbs, you might have to leave and come back again. Um, Y'all was in middle school when I came out. I was in I college. Was. I was already out of college and working. Please. <laughs> Brandon, you are damn near 50, so chill. It don't look like it. Well, well, well. You, well, you well. keep you keep eating that shit, you is. You better stop it. <laughs> <laughs> that was not shit. It was pudding. Nah, it was what did he put, put in my ass? It was pudding. You don't say put in my ass. Brandon might like that. It was All right, let me go back on mute. Uh, um, Dolores. Okay, hold on. Steven, we're going to bring you up right quick. Curbs requested again. 
B, put a picture of what you was eating, what you call pudding. Put it up there. Was no, it, oh, no, don't. not I that got country. PTSD. Oh. It looked like bark. <laughs> Y'all gonna leave it alone. You mix that thing up with some grits and some ketchup and eggs, please. Oh, I know what he's talking about. You That's eat, disgusting. Like, Liver <laughs> pudding, right, B? Yep. That's disgusting. You eat like you on the plantation. <laughs> yes, the master. Go ahead, Steven. What's up? Okay, no Sorry, um, oh, okay. my question is about the Mystics, and if you already talked about them, I'm sorry. I'm going to Columbia tomorrow, and I'm still trying to pack my things, um, just because the parade day wasn't enough, so I, I kind of want to go back and go to some of my old spots, but what do we think about uh, some of the things that the Mystics did? Uh, do we feel like they are going to be like solid contenders for anything? Uh, this upcoming W season. Shay, they are going to contend for the number one pick next year. That is what they're going to contend for. That's all I have to offer, Stephen. Um, I don't know if you hate me, but the fact that you make me relive this again is interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, Aaliyah Edwards is going to be fine. I just, I don't. I don't care. I actually, I don't care. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Tear that shit down, burn it down. I don't care. I do think there needs to be some investigating because it seemed like T Ball might be running players off at this point. So is the girl retiring or not? He Claire, he said that she is not. But I think that she told him she was retiring because she don't want to go back to DC. <laughs> oh, let it out, Shay. Let it out. Thank you, Steven. Enjoy. Be safe. Pack when you get. Um. Enjoy the Who's rushes. The Last question. Who's the point guard in Washington, Shay? Oh, we covered that. It's me, and then Rob gonna come when he's <laughs> done working. Kamala gonna do a shift. Like we got a rotation going. But I really, it pisses me off that they didn't take Jalen. Like I just. Well, I'm about to go do an edible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Terps, you back again. Hold on, let's see if it works this time. There you uh, go. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear y'all. Can, can y'all hear me? Yeah. All right. My uh, my question. I had like two questions, and they both about the sky. First off, uh, I heard somebody ask like, "What's the discourse like in Chicago as far as like the two draft picks from my little age group on Facebook and stuff like that?" It's most of the niggas though. They they pretty happy about Angel Reese and they want to go see her. But most people that ain't never been to a sky game in their life. But my first question was, um, do you think Kennedy Carter would get meaningful minutes? And my second question is, do you think the sky would change their um they fan engagement? Cause we had like a we had like a halftime show with Chance the rapper little brother and some little girl, and it was like garbage <laughs> last year. So that was my that was my, my two questions. Well, I'm so weak. <laughs> Who's the little girl? I don't really want to. Some, some girl little named girl. some girl named Monty the G or something like that. It was, she. That's... <laughs> I think I think it would be dope if they did. I feel like I wish they would lean more into like the 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 people they got coming to the games. Like I know Atlanta does a really good job of leaning into the culture. Like they have. I mean, they didn't have Saucy Santana. They didn't have Armoretta do stuff. Just real Atlanta. That would be really who? Oh, One twelve. Yeah, like that would be dope. So I really think they should, especially how you already saying the people in your Facebook group going crazy. They trying to come out already. Like, so I think give them another reason. Like, have something to do it. It'd be really dope. Um, Kennedy Carter, if she can make it through training camp and she got her head on straight, I I can see her. I mean, she, I mean, she could hoop. Not a one. Pretty probably it's pretty much all locked up. But y'all think Kennedy could do two? Yeah. Yeah. Her, her and yeah. Dana beside each other. Yeah. So I if she if she could get through camp, I, I would like it. She also played with Elizabeth Williams already. Uh, oh her. shit, you're right. Who was the one that tweeted Camilla and Angel? Was that Lil Dirt? Bring him. Oh yeah, he did tweet him. Yeah. <laughs> They're calling that girl O Block Barbie. <laughs> Lil Dirk not finna Lil Dirk not finna do no Chicago guys like and plus that stadium is kinda small anyway. I don't It is, it is. 
It's kind of it's kind of weird. It's kind of weirdly set up too. But oh. you need more security. When you can't I go went, to the game or something. When I no, 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 no. I, I think you can go and I don't, you know, because the the security security it ain't it really ain't no good security out there anyway. Because they like the players walk right out the stadium. So we meet players all the time because they just walk straight out the stadium with like no security and nothing like that. Great game. Oh, not, they could just walk up on. Oh, okay. oh yeah, they do. I remember me and, they probably, they're going to change that. Go ahead, Greg. Wait, so he said they could just walk up on who? The players. Now, I, I ain't say, like, most of the times, like, when they come out, like, I don't met Dana uh-huh. Evans. Like, most players, like, Kelsey Plum came out, just walk right past, you know, Dana Evans. Most of the players just come right out the front of the door and they just walk across the street. Like, and there don't so, really be no security with them. I, I can't speak on KP because I don't, I don't know a situation. Mm. But I, I guarantee you, it, it looks like Dana's by herself, but she's she's not by herself. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I, I figured that, but you know. Um, in regards to what you were saying, as far as like the what the the Sky fan base looks right now, hopefully they. I mean, I know like the numbers, but I hope hope like someone actually does something, um, like a survey or just kind of shows over like the last. I don't know, man. We would say like five years how the fan base is a lot different. So they have been trying to be more um, appealing to what the what that fan base looks like now. And they have things planned this year that uh, I'm interested to see how it goes. But um, you fr- you're from Chicago? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm from here. I, I, I've been like I, I did an internship with them in like 2022, but now mm-hmm. I'm I'm kind of with. I don't know if you know what Good Sport is. Uh, um, yeah, the the, the 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 drink company. Yeah, so I uh-huh. I, been, I get tickets through them, and I was mostly at every game last year. But like most of like the halftime shows and like mm-hmm. pregame stuff was the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I expect a lot of the uh, pregame and halftime shows a little bit different this year. Um, but uh, like I said, they have some some stuff I can't mention, but they have some stuff coming up this season that I think is going to be really good for fan engagement um uh, and it's gonna be fun though so definitely still come out to the games for sure appreciate y'all no problem for sure thanks for coming chris <clears throat> wait did, did it let her up yes she's up here okay there you go hey um good, good evening y'all uh two quick questions um i had a question actually for greg um, and for B. Terrell. So, Greg, from a market um, availability perspective, based on this draft class, how do you think that they're going to fare in their markets? And then for B. Terrell, what the hell is Atlanta doing? Like, I'm a transplant, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> I'm sitting up here like, I can't even, you know, rock with them because they're the only team I will root for here in Atlanta. And like, I don't know what the dream is doing, but yeah, but Greg, uh, I'm curious about their marketing availability based on this draft class. Uh, B, you want to go first? Girl, I don't know. <laughs> they, they, they drafting and vibing, drafting and fashion, I guess getting ready for next year. So we're going to see what this looks like, and then we'll revisit in 2025. Okay, so are you – is it like a – Particular, uh, like a certain rookie you you're asking about, just overall draft class. Um, I would just say overall draft class. Uh, specifically, mm-hmm. I'll give specificity to the first round because if you look mm-hmm. at the way that their markets are set up for those mm-hmm. teams, um, just based on your expertise, you know, in the mm-hmm. space, um, I'm curious just on your viewpoints about their um, market availability. Yeah, it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting. So when you look at, let's just take like the top eight. Let's just do those for instance. Um. Like, obviously, Caitlin is who she is, and Indiana is eerily similar to Iowa when you look at it as far as what that demographic looks like. So she's going to do what, what she's going to do, um, not only Indiana, but, you know, nationally. Um, Cam Brink and Rakia are going to fit in just fine in L.A., especially Rakia. Um, she's extremely marketable for a lot of different reasons, and once she's on the court, is going to show as well. Um, Camilla and Angel being in Chicago, to me, that's probably the, this is like the best city for them uh, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but if anyone has experienced like Chicago in the summertime, then you'll, you'll know why it's a lot the city has to offer. Uh, I'm actually interested to see with both of them, 
you know, some of the, the marketing deals that they have at, at the pro level as well. Um, I think Aaliyah Edwards is going to do pretty good in Washington. Um, I see Adidas is really pushing her right now. Um, to my knowledge, she might be the only one that they signed in this rookie class. If I'm not mistaken, I think she is. Uh, has Camilla announced who she signed with, B? Not a, I haven't seen anything officially. Nike posted just um, just Caitlyn and Alyssa. So I know there was the Alyssa Nike who? Brazil thing there, but I haven't seen You said Alyssa. Alyssa Pilly? She signed with Nike? Uh, according to their post, they did the 2024 draft class, and it was just Caitlyn and her. Really? Oh, see, I didn't know that. Um let me see. I think Cam, Cam's New Balance. I don't. I don't think Rakia has said anything yet about who she's with. Um, I expect, like, even with Angel, I expect Reebok to really, really like ramp it up and push her, especially in the Chicago market, uh, because now that's when you look across the board at the at the twelve um, team. Chicago probably has, and damn, they may have the most shoe deals on a team outside of Vegas, probably. If I'm not mistaken, because you got, let me see, Marina's UA, E-Will's Adidas, Dana's Jordan, Izzy's Jordan. So you add uh, Michaela's Nike. Uh, so you add Angel and Camilla to that. Like, that's a lot. And to um, further kind of go into depth about your, your question, the more visibility that's going to um, <clears throat> come from viewership, the more emphasis is going to be put on production on the court. And we're kind of about to see a shift from like some agents and and, and uh, managers, all they talk about is like followers, 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 and like that's cool and all, but it's really about to shift back to like, what is your productivity on the court? Because if all the eyeballs are watching the games, a lot of people are not about to give a damn about what you're doing on, on, on Instagram or TikTok because it's kind of like how, even though Facebook's a little bit older, Facebook already has everybody there, right? So you're you're paying for that space, and that's how the W is going to be, especially when you um, – hopefully they do right on this new TV deal. Like, them numbers that they were saying, like, a week or two ago didn't make no damn sense. Like, they really should be looking at, like, between 300 and 400 a year. Like million, that's what they really should be looking at if they really doing real business. And if you're doing that, then you can only imagine how many people are going to be watching the games and tuning in. So um, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see uh, who really takes uh, full advantage of the um, the like the branding and the marketing um, for this their careers. You know, um, obviously the NIL uh, babies have a, a leg up on some of the older ones because they're coming into it already knowing some of the ins and outs, but um, it's a lot of them that um, still got to figure it out. So it'll be, it's going to be fun. I mean, I enjoy it. I, I like it. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a few players in the W that they already are in that mix and do that. And they make um, really good money off of the court. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of people don't have that. So for me, I, the more the merrier because <clears throat> the other part of that, what people don't understand is let's take uh, Caitlin Clark, whatever her deal is with Nike. If you are someone that's with Adidas or UA or Puma, New Balance or any other uh, shoe brand and you're playing right next to her, the more people watch her, the more people going to watch you. So you got to understand how to leverage that with the brand you're with so that you can pay too. And I want to see how many people actually take that concept and that, that, um, mindset and go get them like new deals hopefully that answered your question though yeah i uh, most definitely I, th I think you're right about something that you said earlier with the uh, uh chicago sky and their fan base um i'm in the analytics space so mm -hmm. i study a lot of that in in school but i think what's important like you said is that looking at those surveys but i hope with the new engagement that the league is getting in totality that all teams starting since draft night have kind of really studied their engagement and looked at that from a case analysis perspective just because mm -hmm. there's so much and so many metrics that could be impactful right. to fan engagement and then even mm -hmm. with the athletes having you know uh analytics persons on their team like that's yeah. something that they need to be in control of their data but yeah it did answer my question mm -hmm. thank you so much and, and also i mean 
out of the 12 teams, how many of, of them have come out and actually gave like a legit valuation on what the team is worth? Like that's another thing that I think all teams need to do. But like someone was in my, my mentions earlier saying, oh, well, you know, the W doesn't make money or generate revenue. And it's like, you can't even remotely say that because you don't even know how much the teams make or how much they're worth. Like, like it's, it's nothing publicly where you can go to look at all 12 teams and see how much they, they, um, they're worth and what they generated last year. And even a number that the W was, pro- that's a projection. That's not the real number. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of things that need to happen. And that starts with transparency. And until that happens, then some people are kind of going to be lost in the sauce a little bit. Appreciate you, Chris. As always, Greg, hold on. We got a couple more before we wrap up. Hold on. B-Ball Queens. Just keep spinning. Just keep spinning. B, I hope you ain't got them Yeezy boots on. I do not have my Yeezy boots yet. I will wear them the next time I have to shoot a game because they are comfortable. And as a man of a certain age, comfort is king. <laughs> I'm I'm sure Jordan Brand got something right up your alley. Be going, oh be no! All right. You trying to have me walking around in them Russell Westbrooks? Mm-mm. Oh, here we go. We're gonna have a wind down this week, so get your drinks ready. Uh, you know, Dolores is probably gonna do a little um one two step for us on the camera. Shay gonna pull out her two belt. Yana gonna have on her bonnet. I'm gonna have me some brown liquor. We are gonna recap the fashions. From this week, we're going to have a big mood board and all of that good stuff. So we're going to post the details once we are ready and make sure that you all come visit and and, and, and join in with us. Because this is our last spaces. We're going on break, y'all. We've been tired. We went all college season. And we want to tell because y'all ask us to do something every goddamn day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take a little break. We're going to take a little break, and we'll see y'all in a few weeks to get ready for the WNBA season. And so you all go ahead and buy your jerseys, go get your merch, open your purse, and all of that good stuff. Read do your, your research. Yes, do your research, read your articles, and actually understand what the hell it is that you're going to be watching on the court. And just because a person got followers doesn't mean that they're going to be the best thing smoking on the court. All right. So with all of that being said, Thank us. For, we thank you for listening. Thank us for speaking. And we will see you all and talk to you all at a later date.